Since season two is coming to an end, I think it's appropriate to correct a mistake I made in my very first episode. Nostalgia. What does it mean? We all know the algebra part, pain and uneasiness, but where does a nos come from? It doesn't come from Kronos, as I said in my first video. It actually comes from nostos, simply meaning a return to home. So nostalgia roughly translates to a homesickness, which is kind of funny because colloquially we like to refer to things from the past, evoking a sense of nostalgia. So ironically, my erroneous etymology kind of tracks more with how we typically use the word. But why do we describe things from the past, giving us this sense of homesickness, nostalgia? Perhaps the past is a home that we can never return back to. Before getting started, real quick, I want to give a couple of big thank yous. First of all, to Oleksandr and Julia Bozek for this wonderful violin and piano rendition of E102 Gamma's theme song. Soon you'll be able to listen to it in full on the Slaw Peacock channel. And a big thank you to Aslan, aka Dragon Doodles, for this wonderful bit of fan art. It's a sort of mock-up of these really cool pin ideas related to my YouTube channel, so I really like these. Thank you. Now on to the video. Sonic Adventure DX was my favorite video game as a kid. I played it on the Nintendo GameCube. This is that very same copy I played all those years ago. It's a standard action game for kids. You've got an anthropomorphic animal with a friend, a rival, and a stalker working together, or more accurately in tandem, to defeat a big bad. You see, this game has a very unique way of telling its story. Of course, you have the main character, Sonic, who's tasked with saving the world fighting Eggman and defeating the final form of a world-ending monster. But alongside his story, you have Tails, who sort of lives in the shadow of Sonic, looking up to him, unaware of how important he is to his dear friend. So his story follows the same beats as Sonic, but from Tails' perspective. With the exceptions of some moments where they get separated and Tails is forced to learn how to fight on his own. You've got Knuckles, who has this sort of birth duty of protecting something called the Master Emerald. It's from this emerald this world-ending beast first emerges from, and pieces of the emerald shatter and scatter across the realm. Of course, his story is about finding those fragments and uncovering the story behind this mysterious master emerald, making sense of his birth duty, and of course, butting heads with Sonic. And then you've got Amy, who tasks herself with protecting a little bird who's escaped from Eggman's clutches. Throughout Amy's story, she's being pursued by one of Eggman's robots who wants to reclaim the innocent bird for Eggman's evil purposes. More on that later. Aside from these comrades of Sonic, we also have two minor characters we can play that momentarily converge with the main story, but ultimately they have their own motives and paths. You've got Big the Cat, who's chasing after his pet frog, Froggy, and, well, we'll get into that other character in a moment. So each character has their main motivation, their centerpiece to their story. Sonic, of course, wants to save the world and thwart Eggman. Tails wants to perfect his prototype for the Tornado 2, but also with Sonic, save the world. Knuckles has the Master Emerald, Amy has the Bird, Big has Froggy, and then there's E-102 Gamma. Gamma's motive, his story, despite being short and very peripheral, I think is one of the most profound I've ever played as a kid. And despite being too young to understand the gravity of this character's story and the sadness behind it, the music, the gameplay, what little narrative I could understand was enough to thoroughly attach me to this character. And at the end of this story, I was blubbering but I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, E-102 Gamma is the odd one of this array of characters because he is on the side of Eggman. He is on the side of Villainy. He's one of Eggman's new line of E-100 robots. And so it's through Gamma that for the first time, we get to see the story from the perspective of one of the many robots that we normally destroy in going against Eggman's machinations. While the main goal of this video is to go into E-102 Gamma's story, I want to introduce him to you all the same way he was introduced to all of us when we were kids playing this game. 
So I'll be giving a taste of this world, the style of the Sonic Adventure series through these other main characters and their storyline, the whole chronology of the storyline. And once all these characters' stories converge, we will shift lanes and focus on E-102 Gamma's storyline. But something tells me I'm gonna get carried away and do a full-blown Flaw Peacock video on just the entirety of this game. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. As always, the best way to enjoy this game is to play it on your own. You can buy it on the PC on the Steam store. It's kind of a shaky port, definitely required that you use a controller, but it's made better with the Sonic Adventure Mod Manager mods. It actually comes with a default cocktail of mods, so you don't actually have to install anything further. I think, personally, it even plays better than how I remembered it on the GameCube. The GameCube was actually a notorious port. By the way, OC, don't steal. No, go ahead, you can do whatever you want with it. Something tells me I'm gonna be a lot more detailed about this game than I was anticipating in this video. So much for a simple season two finale. But let's get right into Sonic Adventure DX Explained. <laughs> Technically, you start off with Sonic the Hedgehog, and as you meet new characters and play the game, you will unlock said new characters right when you first meet them. Now, every time we start a playthrough with a newly unlocked character, we start off at the earliest relevant point of their story. So before starting with the main character, Sonic, let's start by showing the earliest chronological events that is witnessed by the characters we can play as. This is with Knuckles and Big. We unlock these characters somewhat early in the game anyway, so we aren't jumping the gun too hard. Let's say we just unlocked Knuckles and we got into the main menu and we started playing his playthrough for the first time. We will be met with this cutscene. A classic full motion video of the villainous Eggman's aircraft approaching a floating island in the sky. This is Angel Island, a mysterious Atlantis in the sky, and a sort of cornerstone of Sonic lore. Home to an equally mysterious race of Chow, but that's neither here nor there. What does Eggman want with this island? What could be contained upon it that could benefit his machinations? Sonic Adventure brilliantly, but non-linearly, pieces together these machinations, this storyline for us, through this island, through many of much of the history tied to this island. So let's go ahead and keep this island in mind. We don't see much before the cutscene ends, and we hear some dialogue from our stoic echidna. As far back as I can remember, I've been living here on this dark island, always guarding the Master Emerald from anything that could harm it. I don't know why I was given this job, why it was my fate destined to be here forever. What the? Knuckles is awoken by the Master Emerald being shattered, and in its place, a mysterious watery humanoid creature by the name of Chaos bodies Knuckles, knocking him back. Chaos disappears into a big drip, you big drip, and the ground begins to rumble. Knuckles states, I've never seen anything like it. Oh no, it's starting to happen. Without the Master Emerald's power, this whole island will fall into the ocean. Okay, so this tells us that Knuckles is guarding the Master Emerald on Angel Island. Either the specific piece of this island falls and lands on Earth, or maybe the entire island itself goes along with it, but I'm not too sure. Before moving into Big's beginning scene, I want to point out that alongside Chaos, there is this mysterious sprite that seems to be released alongside him. Now let's shift gears to the beginning scene of Big the Cat. Again, we are pretending we've just unlocked this character, we went to the main menu, and we're starting off his playthrough for the first time. While he's having a cat nap, his pet Froggy reacts to the earthquake caused by bits of Angel Island falling to Earth. The cute amphibian investigates to be faced with that creature, Chaos. We don't see what happens next, but the effect of it seems to have evolved Froggy in a way. Big reacts to his new tail, but instead of acknowledging his feline father figure, Froggy hops over to this yellow gem and gobbles it up. Big refers to this as his lucky charm, but Sonic fans would recognize this as a Chaos Emerald. Hey, wait a minute! You swallowed my lucky charm! 
These are the MacGuffins of the Sonic Adventure story, the prized possessions you need to get your hands on to progress the plot. In the Sonic Adventure storyline, the Chaos Emeralds can be used as a spiritual focal point, an energy source for machinery, and a means of transcending one's abilities and limitations. So it goes without saying, these are quite valuable items. <laughs> it's starting to become so less. <laughs> it's starting to become very apparent. <laughs> Making a video about Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> and I'm wearing my I'm wearing my blue suit. Everyone's like, do fear and hunger. Sorry, bud. Best I can do is Sonic the Hedgehog. Froggy seems to be acting strange, possessed in a way, to collect the Chaos Emeralds and abscond from Big. Come back here. What's wrong with you? Something's not right. He's always been strange. Froggy! Froggy! Wait up! Oh, Big's reaction to his amphibian friend acting strangely is, is so sad. And so from this point, chronologically, both Knuckles and Big's quest start. Knuckles to find all the pieces of the Master Emerald, and Big to catch up with his prodigal Froggy. So the first two steps of Eggman's evil plan is in motion. The Master Emerald is broken, and Chaos, this being trapped within it, has been released. In addition to that, Froggy has been given a new tail and is collecting Chaos Emeralds, for who we don't necessarily know just yet. Regardless, so far as we know, the Yellow Emerald is the only one in play. We'll go ahead and mark it with an F to say it's in the custody of Froggy at the moment. Now that we have some idea where these initial moving pieces started, let's truly start off where all players begin, and that is with Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> So funny to me, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh, frick. <laughs> Anyone who's been on the internet as long as I have know, like, Sonic the Hedgehog is a very, like, loaded character. And so, like, doing a video on it as, like, as flushed out as this is just funny. Now, the game might look a bit different from how you remember. I'm playing with some mods on the PC port. Sadly, we may miss out on some of that nostalgia, but the PC port is just so janky, and I'm not sure if it's placebo, but it feels like this cocktail of mods has fixed a lot of my problems. Now, I'm going to let some scenes speak for themselves, and I will summarize some other scenes to move this along. But for the sake of old times, let's play out this beginning scene. Oh yeah! This is happening! What's up? You are completely surrounded! Surrender yourself! Note that this first fight with Chaos is Chaos Zero. This signifies that currently Chaos has consumed no Chaos Emeralds yet, so he's at his weakest form. But despite being weak, this is in my opinion Chaos' creepiest form. He is the size of a regular human, but with a long head and long arms, his only distinctive features being his glowing eyes. But this fight is very straightforward. I'll get more detail with Sonic's mechanics when we enter our first proper level, or as they're called, action stages. Weakened, Chaos flees from Sonic. This is probably my favorite line in the game. Come on, you big drip. Where are you going? You know nothing, fool. It's Chaos, the god of destruction. This is Eggman, the big bad of this game, and really all Sonic games, as far as I'm aware. In some games and cartoons, his villainy is mild and comical. Snooping as usual, I see. Which, of course, is fitting for a kid's series. But in Sonic Adventures 1, 
he's kind of a bit of a bastard. The next day, Sonic is chilling at the Station Square Hotel pool, drinking what I can only assume is a chili dog flavored daiquiri. That is until he sees his dear friend, Tails, Tails spinning from the sky in his busted prototype airplane called the Tornado. What? Tails? And it seems he's about to crash. Ah! Watch out. You're gonna crash! It's around this moment that Tails' story starts as well. In these moments, I'll do my best to play these scenes in tandem so you can get a good idea of the different perspectives at play. Ah! Tails, now oh, what am I gonna do with you? And so begins our first action stage, the Emerald Coast. Ah, yes, that's good. That's some good nostalgia. I won't show the whole playthrough of this level, but I'll point out that as Sonic, we have the fastest movement of the characters. His levels are primarily made up of long courses of obstacles and enemies, but designed around his speed. While in some moments it feels like you're just leaning on the joystick and taking in the scenery, you want to pay some mind and pick up rings, avoid hazards so that you don't lose those rings, and defeat Eggman's robots to free these cute little animals trapped inside. This is key. It's one of the things we take for granted when playing Sonic Adventure games. But this is absolutely essential to gaining a deeper understanding of a certain character. Keep the fact that Eggman's robotic goons require having animals trapped inside them in mind. We enter the next zone of this action stage and... Oh my. Ah oh man, that's some good nostalgia. But not powerful enough to make a grown man cry. The Emerald Coast is my favorite Sonic level. It's bright, sunny, and stylish with plenty of rings to collect and no cheap shots to interrupt your speedster gameplay. And on top of all that, it's got the iconic Killer Whale segment. And to be honest, this really strong start kind of tracks with the second installment of the series. I can replay and replay Emerald Coast as well as the City Escape level. But anyways, we find our dear Tails. I'll be using footage from other characters' gameplays to supplement the flow, and personally I really like Tails' version of this event. I really wish I could get into how much I loved Tails as a kid. The way I saw myself in him and the way I related to how he saw Sonic made him my favorite character. But sadly, this is real life. People change and it wouldn't be in a good taste to revel in a long dead past. While I've become more like the reclusive Knuckles in my adulthood, I would be lying if I said I didn't miss the dependable, innocent, Tails-like version of myself sometimes. Perhaps that's essentially what these three main characters of the Sonic series symbolize. Tails, the innocent, wonder-driven fox. Sonic, the youthful, energetic, adventurous hedgehog. And Knuckles, the duty-driven, mature, restful echidna. I'll summarize this next scene. Sonic and Tails touch base. Sonic is concerned about Tails' accident, but Tails mentions that his prototype has a few bugs to iron out due to a new power supply, and he brandishes a purple Chaos Emerald. So we have confirmation of two locations of Chaos Emeralds, one in Froggy's stomach and one in Tails' custody. Tails invites Sonic to his workshop and the cutscene ends. One thing I'd like to point out is the use of music in this game. Each character has a leitmotif or a theme song, typically a backing track, instrumental version of a fully produced sung theme song. When playing as Tails and talking to Sonic, we always hear Sonic's leitmotif, an energetic electric guitar rock song. We see Sonic 
in the eyes of Tails as this badass heroic figure that we hope to one day emulate. Whereas when playing as Sonic, when talking to Tails, we hear Tails' theme song. A chipper, uplifting, I don't know, more poppy song. And with the music, we see Tails through the eyes of Sonic, a dependable, cherished BFF that anybody would be lucky to have by their side. The reason I think this is important is because in most other scenes, you will hear the theme song of the person you are playing as or who the scene is focusing on. But in Sonic and Tails' case, when their best friend comes into the scene, they, for that one moment, become the main character, the hero in their own eyes. Maybe I'm being floppy, but I'll keep my eye out for more instances where this music is used for artistic purposes. And listen, even if I'm being floppy, it's Sega. Between the Sonic and the Yakuza series, they are the kings of OSTs. Allow me to gush for a moment. Our next destination is the Mystic Ruins, but before that, I want to show you something really cool. The Chow Garden. Whenever we finish a level, our character banks all the rings collected and holds onto those animals that we save from the robots. And we can use them in this sort of Tamagotchi pet simulator. But instead of pets, we are taking care of an innocent cute race of garlic headed creatures called the Chow. We can use rings to buy them specific food, hats, or new eggs to hatch more Chow. And we can use the animals to teach our Chow techniques and skills and the Chow will also change their shape and physical attributes to mimic the forms of these animals. Hmm, this is very interesting. Now, as a kid, hardly any of the story was retained in my mind. However, I do remember being intrigued by the similarity between the word Chow and chaos. It's just one letter off. And as a kid, I never beat this game, so I never discovered that this similarity in naming is not a coincidence. Remember the affinity that chaos had towards Froggy? It interacted with it and then gave it a new body part. Froggy sort of changed and evolved, and this somewhat mirrors how the Chows interact with animals you give the Chow, taking on their attributes, their skills behaviors and changing their body parts to look more like these animals. This mirroring is not a coincidence, but we won't get a solid confirmation of this until much later in our trek of the game. I won't get into much depth regarding the Chow Garden just yet, but hey, since we've been talking about music and tear jerking nostalgia, let me rip open a deeply seated one. We can take our Chow to a computer and we have the option of renaming it, but that's weird. There are two options, goodbye and quit. Do they both leave this interface? Well, I click goodbye. Ah, I remember as a kid, I hated it whenever I'd accidentally click this. This is used to get rid of chows from your garden, releasing them into the natural habitat. But the music is so messed up, so sad. And look at that chow, look at him. He's just staring back at you. Still to this day, I've never said goodbye to a chow. I can't bring myself to do it. Anyways, let's dip out of here. There are three major overworld areas, Central Station, the Mystic Ruins, and the Egg Carrier. We don't have access to the Egg Carrier just yet. This will be Eggman's airship. Central Station is a quaint city, its major draws being a hotel, beachfront, casino, a romantic theme park, and other amenities. But my favorite part of Central Station is the public transportation. The train headed for the Mystic Ruins will be departing soon. This area's music is so iconic. It's the perfect palate cleanser of a theme song. No matter how intense or sad of a cutscene you've just witnessed, when you return to Central Station, all of that just washes away. Honestly, I think it's still just fun to walk around and just talk to the various denizens. Right now, we want to meet Tails at his workshop, so we take the train to the Mystic Ruins, the second overworld we have access to. The Mystic Ruins is very fun to explore and get lost in, but because some of the subsections are so sprawling, it sort of left a bad taste in my mouth as a kid. I think for most of you who play this game, this theme song not only brings back memories of this game, but just this era of gaming in general. But for me, I associate it with being stuck not knowing where to go to progress the story. Making our way to Tails' workshop, we enter another cutscene. Both Sonic and Tails' cutscenes here are very similar, but what's interesting is the dialogue is slightly different. Not different enough to give any extra context, but still I can't help but admire that the Sonic team reshot and tweaked these cutscenes to keep the story fresh, no matter who you are playing as. 
And the fact that these cutscenes are slightly different from one another also kind of leans into the idea that these characters, despite being in the same story, may experience it differently. Now, I won't dwell on it too much, but check out how different Eggman's voice is in both of these cutscenes. <laughs> if it isn't Sonic! Look, it's a giant talking egg! Sonic! Well, well, well. If it isn't Sonic and Tails... It's Eggman! In Sonic's cutscenes, Eggman is a bombastic villain. Well, if it isn't Sonic! Whereas Tails sees Eggman as something more sinister. Well, if it isn't Sonic and Tails. This is something that comes up again, Tails overcoming his fear and anxiety to rise up to the occasion. Now, let me go ahead and summarize this cutscene. Eggman is essentially intersecting Sonic and Tails to get that Chaos Emerald from Tails. We enter a fight against Eggman in his Egg Hornet. And I really like Eggman's depiction in this game, as almost always being in his little egg pod that he could just sort of plug into his many inventions. This one is the Egg Hornet, a simple enough boss fight. A funny thing I noticed with all of the boss fights in this game is naturally when you lose them, you have to try again. But when you win, the story context kind of ignores that you just beat the boss. If the story requires for Eggman to take the Chaos Emeralds anyways, he's just gonna take them from you in the next cutscene. <laughs> Well, that wasn't so hard. Aha! Oh no! Sure, the Egg Hornet is destroyed, but still, ultimately, Eggman steals the Chaos Emerald from Tails and feeds it to Chaos. This confirms that right now, Chaos is being controlled or is following the lead of Dr. Eggman. When given a Chaos Emerald, he transforms, now growing a bit taller and having a bigger arm with vertebrae visible from the inside. So each new Chaos Emerald that Chaos consumes adds a new part to him and makes him stronger. Kind of reminds you a little bit of the Chows. Eggman marvels at this transformation, mentioning this being just as the stone tablets predicted. So this would be the moment in Sonic or Tails' playthrough that it would become clear that Chaos isn't an invention by Eggman, but a primordial creature with some ties to ancient stone-hewn prophecy. Eggman reveals he hopes to work with Chaos to destroy Station Square and build upon it Robotnik Land. Yeah, that checks out for a typical cartoon villain. Nothing too profound here. If you want a more profound Eggman, you would need to play Sonic Adventure 2. Eggman absconds with the newly evolved Chaos. Without more emeralds, the monster can't transform. So it's up to us to get the emeralds before Eggman does, huh? Okay, so our next mission is to get the rest of the Chaos Emeralds before Eggman does, to prevent Chaos from evolving any further. We pick up a windstone near Tails' workshop and use it to gain access to our next action stage, the Windy Valley. Ooh, yeah! This is another great song, super optimistic, with a sort of bell chimey sound to it. Oh, wind chimes, windy valley. Sonic's version of this level is in three phases, with each having its own music. The first phase we are still somewhat terrestrial, but we enter a tornado and enter a short second phase to escape the tornado. Then our third phase is a much more traditional Sonic level with just floating grated lanes in the sky that we just speed through. It's during this phase Tails' version of Windy Valley starts. In Tails' level, we have access to his ability to fly and hover for a limited amount of time. We have the extra task of beating Sonic to the end. We don't have the same acceleration and top speed as Sonic, so we must use our flight to displace chunks of the level to fly past our racing speedster rival. I love Tails' levels. They taught me how to take leaps of faith in games, take risks to make progress, and seeing Tails' progress marker just blink way ahead of Sonic is so satisfying. I also love how encouraging Sonic is in these levels. Hey, hey, hey! Anyways, back to Sonic. We both make it to the end of the level and find a blue Chaos Emerald. So now there are three Chaos Emeralds in play. Froggy still has the yellow one, Chaos now has the purple one, and Sonic and Tails just came across the blue one. I'm just gonna keep labeling it as T for Tails. 
Now, I want to take a moment and switch lanes. I'm gonna do my best to tell this story in a chronological manner, making sense of the non-linear storytelling of this game. In addition to some online forum posts, I ultimately used Kochu's video to help me guide where I can place these events. Link to their video in the description. That being said, I do take some artistic liberties, primarily for the purposes of this video and for the sake of narrative flow. So while this was all happening, as Sonic and Tails were suspended in Windy Valley looking for Chaos Emeralds, Knuckles was in the city, downtown Station Square, looking for the first three pieces to the Master Emerald. His gameplay is very fun. I recall as a kid not liking the more methodical flow of Knuckles' levels, but as an adult you really appreciate the details of these levels' set design. Knuckles' action stages are less about speed and more about searching. We have to find three pieces of the Master Emerald hidden across the level. Being that years of duty have attuned Knuckles' senses to the Master Emerald, we have these indicators of how close we are to these shards. They're done in that same hot and cold fashion. You are hot when you are close, but you are cold when you are far. Is that still a thing? You know, like, oh, you're getting cold. Oh, you're getting hot. You're on fire. Is that, is that something that people still do? Anyways, we find all three of the Master Emerald Shards. Around this time, Sonic is back in the city. We stumble into the sewers to find an upgrade to our abilities. The sprite tells us... Now you've got light speed shoes. Press and hold the action button to store up power. Now this is a neat ability, but I want to point out something about this helper sprite. We can find her in all of the overworld levels, whenever we need hints as to where to go next. But her voice, keep her voice in mind, this is something that was lost on me as a kid and I failed to make the connection. Anyways, we use our ring dash ability to escape the sewers. And suddenly, a memory is brought back to me. This beautiful golden chow egg. But alas, when we pick it up, bars slide down on the store's front doors. I place the egg back where it was, and old synapses in my brain that hadn't been triggered in years suddenly fire up. I go to the front yard of the city hall and find an egg-shaped stone. I take it to the store and swap the golden egg for the stone egg, triggering the pressure plate and allowing me to leave with this golden, pristine egg. I felt like such a G when I first got a hold of this egg when I was a kid. I never was good at games, never resourceful. So when cracking this code, I felt very proud of myself. We can expedite the hatching of eggs by holding the non-attacking action button on the egg to pick it up and hold the movement stick at the same time to shake it gently. There was this rumor that went around back then that how many times you shook the egg determined what face it would have. Not sure how true this is, but I get lucky and my chaos has a toothy grin and mischievous eyes. I love it. I let him interact with some peacocks until he has a full set of peacock parts. And of course, to remain on brand, I name him Peacock. Now, as to not waste any more time, this will be the last we see of Peacock and the Chow Garden until later in this video. Now, let's press on. We must find another Chaos Emerald in a local casino. Using the new Ring Dash ability, we press a button that opens the doors and enter the casino. When playing this level as Sonic, it is interesting. It's novel, but it kind of overstays its welcome in my opinion. It's the most unique of the levels. Instead of racing to a finish line, we have to collect rings and cash them in to reach a Chaos Emerald of this level. There are two pinball machines we can play on, a Sonic themed pinball machine with slots mechanics, or my favorite of the two, I still don't get this pinball machine. It's based on a game called Knights, a Sega game evidently, but I have zero clue as to what the hell it's about. But based on what we experience in this pinball machine, it's like, I don't know if you combine Spyro Enter the Dragon with Cirque du Soleil. I won't get too detailed, but some of the cool segments, or I guess they're called uh, features in video gambling lingo, is this segment where you fly around and see this purple jester character dancing in this cool little Elysium. And another one where that same purple jester flies you through space through these rings. I'm assuming these are motifs and game mechanics that would be recognizable by fans of the Knights games. But alas, I'm not one of them. That being said, after watching this video by Digi Valentine, I might have to give the game a shot. But anyways, after collecting 500 rings, we have to painfully part ways with them to reach the end of this level. Tails also has his version of this level, but it's a short stretch of the underground area of the casino. We can get access to this area in Sonic's version when we lose in the Sonic Pinball game. Anyways, great, we have two Chaos Emeralds. Now let's go find a third... Ah, crap. Eggman. Oh no, the Chaos Emerald! 
Oh, no, you don't! Oh, jeez! <laughs> Amen. It looks like the Chaos Emerald we just found is the one that gets stolen, but at least we have the blue one from Windy Valley. So the Grey Chaos Emerald is in play. Right now Eggman has it, but he'll soon be feeding it to Chaos. So right now I'll just go ahead and mark it as in Chaos's possession. Sometime before this point, Knuckles also made his way into the casino. And instead of playing pinball, we again look for Master Emerald Shard. I think this is my favorite Knuckles level. At least it's the most memorable to me. Exploring the nooks and crannies of this stylish casino was super fun as a kid. Sadly, as an adult, your shrewdness causes you to finish these levels a bit too quickly. But when you're an inexperienced child, you have no choice but to take in the scenery. It's interesting, I want to point out there are some enemies in this level that are clearly a part of the casino's decoration. When we beat them, they don't give us animals. I think this is a further indication that the trapped animals are unique to the invasive enemies of Eggman's robotic menagerie. When finding the third shard, we are taken to a peculiar scene. Where in the world am I? I don't remember being here before, but something about it is familiar. Hmm, this is very strange. What is this, a flashback? A dream? An atemporal astral projection? This is one of the more mysterious aspects of Sonic Adventure's unorthodox narrative style. Knuckles states that despite not knowing where he is, this place seems familiar. Within this temple district, we find denizens that look like Knuckles, fellow echidnas. We will come to learn that these echidnas are part of the Knuckles clan, a warrior tribe of echidnas, and evidently the long-lost ancestors of Knuckles, the echidna that we play as in this game. There's a lot of baggage here. Let's go ahead and keep this in mind. Father, please don't! To call, the seven emeralds are essential to our survival. It is for the good of all our people. How can I make you understand? Attacking other countries, stealing and killing can't be the right path to peace. No one has the right to take their holy grounds. I beg you, Father! Foreboding. What are the implications of this? Is the fact that we first see Knuckles guarding the emerald mean that it eventually became one of the spoils of the Knuckles clan pillaging? Not quite. We'll have to wait and see. Also, listen to this female echidna's voice. Father, please don't! Now you've got light speed shoes. This is the same voice of the helper sprite that we interact with throughout this game meaning they are both the same character. This is spelt out for us more explicitly in the finale of this game, but since I never beat this game as a kid, I didn't learn that until quite recently. The sequence ends and we are back in front of the casino. Huh? Now where am I? Back in Station Square, I see. What's going on here anyway? and stumble across the recently knocked out Sonic and Tails. Moments like these allow us to understand when things are taking place in our story. We leave our Mobian friends and... Oh, you didn't know this? Yeah, apparently these anthropomorphic characters have a name now. Mobians. Yeah, can you believe it? Now I know how Star Wars boomers felt when they first heard the word midichlorians. Anyways, we leave our Mobian friends to rest and bump into Eggman. This is the first time we are seeing his legs. This is what peak male physique looks like. Knuckles only catches a glimpse of what Eggman's carrying in his hand, thinking it's a part of the Master Emerald. He chases after Eggman. Knuckles confronts Eggman in a sort of banquet hall of the hotel. Hopefully housing a world-ending god of destruction doesn't void Eggman's deposit. N Knuckles. Oh, this isn't what you're after. You're right. That's okay, though. I can use you as a guinea pig to test it. Chaos! Chaos! Chaos? It's that creature again. The same one I saw on my island. He was there when the Master Emerald shattered. I'm sure of it. He saved me the trouble of looking for him. Now I'll get him good. <laughs> Way to go, Chaos! <laughs> Changing shape won't scare me. Fine, give it your best shot. You know what? I take what I said back. This version of Chaos is probably even creepier. 
Maybe playing the game on a modern rig is speeding up his movements, but his idle cycle is just so uncanny. This is Chaos 2. His boss fight is pretty straightforward. If you notice, those two floating sprites above his head are the same color as the two Chaos Emeralds he's consumed. This isn't super important, just a cool little detail. I'll summarize this next part. Eggman fools Knuckles into thinking that Sonic is looking for the pieces of the Master Emerald. Perhaps this is appealing to the historic rivalry between Sonic and Knuckles. Will Knuckles take the bait? We'll have to wait and see. Back in our Sonic and Tails playthrough, we wake up and our duo notices the missing emerald. We set out to find the next emerald. We pick up an ice stone and head to the Mystic Ruins. A subsection of this area opens up with some rocks falling. Now don't pay this specific event too much mind. It opens up for different characters at different points of their story, so I don't consider it to be a reliable chronological marker. Anyways, we explore the cave to find a place for the ice stone. This next action stage is called Ice Cat. Sonic has a few phases. The first two phases of this action stage leave a bit to be desired, but maybe I just don't like ice levels. The third phase, however, is very cool. A snowboarding segment with a phenomenal track. And this is where Tails' version of the level starts as well. And of course, it's as a racing segment against Sonic. I don't think it would be wise to show too much of this snowboarding segment. I think the port really screwed with how the camera reacts to the bumpiness of this level. So as to avoid giving anybody motion sickness, I'll just skip to the end. Sonic and Tails obtain another Chaos Emerald, this time a green one. Okay. Heroes 2, Villains 2, Amphibians 1. I wonder why Sonic is after the Master Emerald. I'd better work fast and get to the bottom of this. While this was all happening, Knuckles was doing his own emerald searching. Knuckles finds some shovel attachments for his fists, allowing him to dig. You've got the shovel claw. Now you can dig through dirt and stone. Press the jump and action buttons simultaneously. With this new ability, we dig up a monkey destruction switch. Wh what? We use the monkey destruction switch to destroy a monkey. Don't worry, it's one of Eggman's robots, so it doesn't have feelings. Don't tell Desdemona I said that. We make our way through the cave, passing that ice area that our rivals are located, to the entrance of the next action stage, only to find another monkey in need of destroying. So we just gotta grab that switch again, destroy the monkey, and enter the Red Mountain level. This area is fun and really allows us to play with Knuckles' gliding ability. It's interesting, this level reminds me a lot of Pumpkin Hill in Sonic Adventure 2. In this level, there's always a chance that some of the shards are buried in the ground, so you'll have to use our new digging ability. Of course, we find all three shards and finish the level. This subsection of the Mystic Ruins is also where Knuckles' portion of the Angel Island landed. Or maybe this whole subsection is Angel Island. I'm not exactly sure. We can actually visit our recently fractured Master Emerald. <laughs> I'm getting a very distinct memory now. As a kid, this specific broken form of the Master Emerald reminded me of when you prematurely bit into a ring pop. <laughs> Good times. But enough lollygagging about lollipop lolly biting. This is a point where the stories between Knuckles and the duo of Sonic and Tails collide. Before getting into this fight, I want to point out Knuckles' theme song. First of all, what a banger. It's kind of crazy how many nuances are lost in the ports and through the tiny speakers of our all CRT TVs. If you really want to enjoy this song, check out the high quality rip of Knuckles' theme I placed in the description. I really like Knuckles' theme because it combines a lower toned electric guitar and straightforward rap lyrics with saxophones and R&B singing. I think it's a very cool characterization of Knuckles, headstrong and to the point, but also deep and mysterious. Also note how in all versions of this cutscene, Knuckles' theme plays. This is going back to the idea that in scenes where characters are central, their theme songs will play. But when Sonic and Tails are present, and either of them are central, Sonic and Tails will play each other's themes. Again, I think leaning into the friendship-focused narrative of this game, there honestly aren't many examples of this. I'm probably getting floppy with it, but I'll point out when it comes up again to help explain what I'm trying to convey. Apologies if I'm doing a messy job at that. Music theory was never my strong suit. Anyways, if we are playing as either Sonic or Tails, we beat Knuckles. But if we're playing as Knuckles, we beat Sonic. In all scenarios, the cutscenes afterwards resolve similarly. I'll play out Sonic's version of these events. Uh, oh. oh no! The Chaos Emeralds! Ha 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 ha! Ah, Eggman! Uh oh! Ha! Like taking candy from a baby! That's a Chaos Emerald! 
That's right, fool! You made it all too easy! You practically gave them to me! Seriously? Again? Can these Mobians figure it the f out? Just printing out W's for Eggman for no reason. Eggman gloats that he's fooled Knuckles. Sonic and Knuckles bicker, with Sonic calling Knuckles a knucklehead, which is pretty funny. And Eggman feeds the two additional emeralds to Chaos, transforming it into Chaos 4. Sadly, we don't get to see what Chaos 3 looks like, but now he looks like a creepy aquatic beast. Ah, oh, jeez. So now the green and blue Chaos Emeralds are within Chaos. That's four Emeralds in Chaos and zero in the possession of the heroes. This is not looking good. We enter a pretty cool boss fight, either as Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles. When Chaos is vulnerable, he slowly peeks his head out of the water, which is creepy as hell. But we make short work of this iteration of the God of Destruction. The next cutscene shows Eggman's aircraft. The Egg Carrier flies over the Mystic Ruins and beams up Eggman and evidently Chaos. Or perhaps Chaos absconds separately, out of scene. The three heroes touch base. Sonic and Tails discuss using Tails' plane to give chase, while Knuckles follows his own agenda. This would be the moment we first unlock Knuckles. Around this time, however, would be the earliest chronological point of another character. Days the same old thing, same place, different day. I miss the good old days. Hanging out with my hero, Sonic. <sighs> Chasing bad guys. And blowing him away. <laughs> but now he's gone. And there's nothing left to do but stop till I drop. There was always something fun to do with Sonic around. I really miss him. What's going on here? Is there an eclipse today or what? Nobody forecast a storm or anything. Eggman, can it be? What's that? one of Eggman's robots, huh? He must have captured you, and somehow you got away, right? Don't worry. I'll protect you. I'll do my best to keep us both from harm. I'll stand by you all the way. Dude, I love Amy. As a boy, I was like, ew, girls, I don't like playing as a girl. But now I can appreciate how iconic her personality is. I like her as a character because she has a lot of these soft features, pink, frilly, loving of animals, lovey-dovey romantic stuff, and also very skittish at first. But within this soft, tiny exterior is a big personality, and also carrying a big-ass hammer. Anyways, let me point out some initial things about that initial cutscene. Evidently, this bird has escaped Eggman's carrier. This bird was likely going to be trapped inside of one of Eggman's robots, so luckily it bumped into Amy. This robot is named Zero. Perhaps Zero is tasked with reclaiming escaped animals, but there's something fascinating about Zero that I want to point out towards the end of Amy's story. Gotcha. So we have a little bird and a little frog in play. Let's keep these Mobinis in mind. Oh my bad, you didn't know this? Yeah, apparently these tiny animals aren't called animals. They are called Mobinis. So the bigger anthropomorphic characters are called Mobians, and the little animals that Eggman traps are called Mobinis. Mobinis! So that's the beginning of Amy's story. We haven't unlocked her yet, but it's around this point that her story begins, right when the egg carrier is seen flying over this region. Sonic and Tails convene at the workshop. Depending on who you're playing as, you get a different perspective of this next cutscene. I've spliced both Tails and Sonic's version to really drive home how 
just Kino or or how the kids these days say peak this next scene is. Sonic, wait here for a second. As cool as this scene was, it transitions us into a buzzkill of an airplane segment. These are my least favorite segments in the adventure series. Let's skip to the end. Tails and Sonic get blasted out of the sky by Eggman's ship. Eggman's voice booming over the intercom of the ship is kind of intimidating. I can't put my finger on why. While all of this was going on, Knuckles was off on his own mission. This is a very cool, albeit vexing, subsection of the Mystic Ruins. We are to place two stone statues into holes at this ancient temple. The first gold one is easy to find. It's right there in front of us when we first enter this area. Simply carry it to the temple and place it in its respective slot. Let me show you how to find this silver stone statue. Starting from this corner of the temple clearing, move away from the safety fencing, keeping your eyes on the left wall. You'll find a little opening that's quite easy to miss. From there, you can dig up that silver statue. I seriously can't believe I actually got past this part as a kid. Now, I'm not too much of a fan of this Knuckles level. We will get to experience Sonic's version of it later, so I'll spend more time talking about its design then. But let's go ahead and keep this moving and skip to the end of this Master Emerald Fragment hunt. We enter another vision sequence, this time in a separate part of Angel Island, where the Chaos Emeralds and the Master Emerald are held. Where am I? This is very strange. I beg of you, hear me now. My father is coming here soon, and I fear what may happen. You must take everyone away from here. Oh, please. Are you saying you can't leave this place? I understand. Let me talk to my father again. There must be a better way to do this. Don't worry, my friends. I won't let you down. I must do something quickly. Wow. A lot of style and importance of this sequence was lost on me as a kid. First of all, the female echidna. I'll go ahead and just reveal her name as Tikal. She's trying to convene with an unseen force that's inhabiting this watery pool. She's trying to warn them of her warmonger father's descent onto these sacred grounds. It's then revealed this is the home of the sweet innocent Chow. The stakes are very high here. And also, Tikal's theme is so hauntingly serene. It really feels like we're being taken back to an ancient time. It reminds me a lot of this one game I played a lot of, you know, around the same time I played Sonic Adventure, Evolution Worlds. These are legit my two favorite games on the GameCube, and the fact I still have them, discs and all, is really, really, I'm really happy about that. But yeah, shout out to anybody who played this game. If you want a real throwback, I'll, I'll place the uh, Linear's... Oh, Linear's not on here. I'll place a Linear's Ocarina song in the description below. Don't worry, it's not going to be like the Knuckles uh, the Knuckles theme song. Just a regular quality riff. I'm low-key kind of tempted to do a video on this game, but it's just a great game. I mean, there's really not much to say about it. Oh, that's right. We're doing a whiteboard for, <laughs> for Sonic Adventure. My bad. So this scene that we've just witnessed is Tikal trying to warn this guardian of the Chow of her encroaching father. Without realizing it, these visions are telling us the backstory of a enigmatic character. Who that is and how it all pieces together, well, stay tuned. 
With all the shards we've been collecting, we take Knuckles back to the shattered Mastered Emerald to piece it back together. But sadly, this ring pop is still chipped. We are missing just three more fragments. Within the emerald, Knuckles sees a vision of the egg carrier. Knuckles deduces that the last three shards must be there. But I don't know where that ship is. Hey, isn't that one of Eggman's robots? Ah, yes. The reason I made this video in the first place. The reason why I've dressed up for such an occasion. If you're well for... <laughs> What's the occasion? Sonic Adventure DX. <laughs> if you are well versed in this game's story, you may have noticed I haven't been following Gamma's timeline. We will, don't worry. I just want to give him his own entire segment. This is the earliest point in the storyline we can unlock E102 Gamma. Knuckles follows the robot to the jungle and makes his way towards Eggman's newly established or suddenly revealed remote base. We will leave Knuckles' storyline here for now, but just remember he is bound for the egg carrier. Now back to our hedgehog and fox. Sonic falls from the sky and lands in the Emerald Coast, clearly worried about Tails. Tails? Tails? You're not who I'm looking for. Oh, I wonder if he's okay. Meanwhile, Tails seems to have landed in... Well, hold on, this is a flashback. Oh, that song. I'll just let this cutscene play out for thoroughness reasons. <laughs> I'm not sure if the I'm not sure if that was the moment that Tails met Sonic, but it's super sweet seeing them race each other in the jungle. Coincidentally, it's the very jungle Tails seems to have landed in. Mmm, wow, that dream brought back memories. I owe so much to Sonic. Sonic! Hmm, wonder where he went. Sure hope he's alright. The tornado's not powerful enough. If I'm going to get that egg carrier, I need to finish my prototype. It needs a Chaos Emerald to work. Looks like I better find one fast. So, Tails sets out to find another emerald in hopes of souping up his tornado. Meanwhile, Sonic and Amy's stories converge. Sonic, wait up! Long time no see! Uh, uh, Amy! What's wrong with you anyway? Listen, this birdie seems to be in trouble. So you need to be his bodyguard for a while. You must be kidding. If you don't, we're just gonna tag along anyway. When playing as Sonic, this is where the cutscene ends. But when playing as Amy, Sonic runs away from us. <laughs> Just like with Tails and Sonic's dynamic, when playing as Amy, when Sonic is present, his leitmotif plays. And when playing as Sonic, we hear Amy's. Now, while Sonic's theme cements Sonic as an important character to Amy, I think Amy's theme plays out for Sonic more like a foreboding theme, like, oh no, Amy's here. And this would be the earliest moment in the story we can unlock Amy as a character. It's around this time that Big makes his way to Station Square, and because he's a bloat-maxing Chad, he RDLs a sedan over his head and enters the sewers so he can gain access to a romantic theme park which is meant for couples only. He's literally me. Also, it's pretty funny, when you enter this specific elevator, his tail gets caught and you can even hear him say, Ow. While Amy and Sonic are busy making their way to their next level, we enter the first action stage of Big the Cat. I despised these levels as a kid. Perhaps I didn't read the guides thoroughly enough, which is highly unlikely because I loved reading GameCube guides back then, but maybe I just wasn't looking hard enough to find a guide as to how fishing as Big the Cat works. So let me demonstrate. When fishing, you want to first get a good look at the pond to find Froggy. Now try and cast your line ahead of Froggy in hopes he will notice the lure. You can use the movement stick to shift your lure left and right 
It's a bit janky, and in most of my experience, these controls are inverted. But so long as Froggy is near your lure, and no other fish are pursuing it, he will usually bite. When this happens, you want to hold down on the movement stick until you see the word hit on the screen. This next part is easy. What I did was press Y and X at the same time in sort of half second intervals to make sure the tension didn't break the line. And you want to avoid this because it's an automatic lose when the line gets broken. No kidding, you just straight up lose a life. But if you are careful, you will eventually catch Froggy. And with this knowledge, these levels went from the hardest levels to the easiest for me. From what I've read on the internet, the tension and aggressiveness of the bigger fish are tied to your frame rate. So if you're playing on 60 frames per second, you may have a harder time with the bonus missions for Big the Cat. But for Froggy, you'll be fine. Anyways, we catch the frog, but then we hear Big the Cat say this. Oh, now what am I gonna do? I guess this means that we dropped Froggy or Froggy hopped out of our arms, but regardless, the story proceeds. We'll see where this takes Big next, but in the meantime, let's zero in on Amy. Wasn't there a place where you couldn't get in alone? The helper sprite hints that our next step is Twinkle Park, the romantic theme park reserved only for romantic couples. Well, specifically, you can't get in alone, so maybe polycules are allowed. That's probably how Froggy got in. They saw a polywog and thought, eh, close enough. Also, an interesting side note, it's at this moment the train workers are on strike. This is likely another chronological marker that helps us properly time all the various storylines. Anyways, Sonic and Amy convene in front of the Twinkle Park entrance. No problem! He's just a chunk of cheesy hardware! Whoa! Oh, now what? Huh? Here! It says, you couples get in free! Let's go! Amy! Uh, whoa, 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 wait! Oh, man! That girl is such a pain! After this cutscene, we automatically start the Twinkle Park action stage. Sonic has two stages. This first one is a sort of hover car raceway. We hop in a car and make our way through a really fun segment. And this song is such a banger. Eventually, we enter the second phase. This would be the proper park grounds of Twinkle Park and the first official action stage of Amy. Sonic's version differs slightly from Amy's. Fuck you! <laughs> nice. Fuck you, you piece of shit! Cack ass! His version of Twinkle Park remains outdoors and is in his typical platformer speedster fashion. Amy's levels, as you saw, while not having a time limit, have a sort of constant hazard. You are constantly pursued by Zero, and he is quite intimidating. You can't defeat him, but there are some funny ways you can knock him off ledges and cause him to get stuck. And we also get these gross, liquidy, tall enemies that might be the prototypes for the artificial chaos enemies that we see in Sonic Adventure 2. Also, this is probably my favorite Amy level. She has her own indoor phase with these halls and mirrors that are just very creepy. And with the added looming threat of Zero, it makes it all the more potent. Now, Amy is somewhat slow, but we can pick up speed pretty quickly. When at max speed, she pulls out her hammer and we can strike at the floor and bounce in an impressive arc. This technique is tricky to master, but I can imagine it helps in trivializing huge chunks of Amy's levels when used properly. Here's what's interesting. There aren't any sort of story-related items to collect at the end of this level. No Chaos Emeralds or anything like that. So instead, we get a classic Sonic level finish condition. These capsules that we press and break to free a bunch of... Mobinis. In Amy's level, we instead grab a balloon and fly away out of Zero's reach. Once we finish the level as Amy, we have access to Twinkle Circuit. Oh, Twinkle Circuit, that's right. Ah, fuck, why not? Low key, high key, half key, shit key. This is another good way of collecting rings, if you are good at handling racing game controls. 
I also noticed that this song is an electronic version of Sonic's theme song. How would Oh, nice! This is cool. Honestly, this is such a legit great game. Bro, man, this is like legit such a fucking great game. Yeah, what he said. Now, I'm not sure how or why Sonic's story takes him here, but we split up from Amy at this point and do this city level for no perceivable reason. I think they just had this really cool level and wanted to fit it in somehow. And I'm glad they did, because I think this is the essential Sonic Adventures level. It starts with a rocking song, and you're evading police-themed robots running on floating highways, and the second phase transitions to a drum and bass scored high-speed rundown the side of a flippin' building. And then after crashing through a bunch of glass, we get electronic piano, synthy music on the ground level of the city. This, I feel, is like the mother bacteria that cultured the awesome game that Sonic Adventure 2 became. So we again break another capsule and free a bunch of tiny animals. Meanwhile, Amy just gets out of Twinkle Park, and this happens. I'm glad we finally lost that robot. Sonic must have gotten lost too. Sonic witnesses Amy being captured by Zero, and now his new mission is to save Amy. Knuckles successfully sneaks out onto the egg carrier right before it lifts off and flies over the Mystic Ruins. Let me go, you hunk of junk! I mean it! Hey there, bull brain! You better get Amy to me or I'll squash ya! Sonic catches up to Zero, and right before being able to take on the robot, it's beamed up by the egg carrier, still holding on to Amy. Shoot! I've lost her again! While this goes on, Big gets into the ice cap level, fishes for Froggy, but Froggy again escapes once more. Oh, now what am I gonna do? Now that most of the stories, more or less, are parallel to one another, let's get back to Tails. Tails legit just finds an emerald lying on the floor. Wow! There's a Chaos Emerald! But right before picking it up, Froggy gobbles it up. Tails follows Froggy into a snowboarding level. Or I guess a sandboarding level. Oh man. Remember Tech and the Power of Juju? That's another fun game. Oh man. Ooh, a hundred Yorbles though, man. Ah. Oh, you want compromise? I'll give you compromise. A hundred fing Yorbles I collected in Tech and the Power of Juju. Again, I'll have to truncate this level from the video because the camera is just too janky. Of course, we save Froggy from this arid environment, and just as we are about to collect our emerald from him, we get this cutscene, another vision. Uh-oh, I thought I was in the desert. I wonder where I am. Shrewd explorers can find an easy-to-miss upgrade in this flashback. You found the Rhythm Badge. To do continuous tail attacks, hold the action button down. I wonder how we are expected to access this area again, if we happen to miss this upgrade. Personally, I don't find it too useful, but it does look really cool seeing our beloved Fox bust some hybrid ballet and breakdancing moves. There's a door at the front of this area that leads to the Master Emerald in the flashback. Here we can get a really good look at the Chaos Emeralds. One of the things I really love about SA1 over SA2 is the emphasis on these Chaos Emeralds. You can almost feel them through the screen. They are a palpable MacGuffin. You feel like you are attaining something valuable when you collect them, even though they are just set pieces to keep the story moving. This era of gameplay really did a good job at giving an air of rarity of resplendence to the items you collect. I can feel the cold golden metal of the shine sprites in Super Mario Sunshine. I can almost feel the weight of those massive gems you collect in Luigi's Mansion. It's just something I don't really feel with modern games anymore. 
but maybe this has less to do with the games themselves and more to do with the waning imagination of adulthood. It just isn't as potent to us anymore. Our shiny Pokemon is another generation's orange assault rifle. Anyways, let's move on to this cutscene. I won't play it all out, I'll just summarize that Tikal reveals to us a prophecy or teaching from her grandmother that the seven Chaos Emeralds are servers to the one that unifies the Chaos, and that Chaos is the power enriched by the heart. Sounds like vague prophecy trope mumbo jumbo, but it will become relevant in the end. If this tradition is maintained within archaeology, perhaps within those stone tablets that Eggman came across, perhaps he got a similar gist from these stone tablets, from this echidna tradition. Maybe he interpreted this as, those who hold the seven chaos emeralds can control chaos. You are the controller. Also, on that note, I wonder if we can draw some parallels between Tikal's father and Eggman both seeking to claim these Chaos Emeralds for their own machinations. Time will tell. Whether or not this is entirely true will be revealed in due time. This also would be the earliest point in our timeline we learn Tikal's name, and before Tails can respond, he wakes from this vision. At this moment, Big and Tails storylines converge, and it's really fun. Let's quickly note that although Tails got the red emerald from Froggy's gullet, the yellow one is still within Froggy. Now again, I'll let this next scene play out because it too is very fun. The time has come at last. This new place should work a lot better. I've ironed out most of the problems. So here it goes. Emeralds, do your stuff. Ready Sonic, here I come. Tornado 2, clear for takeoff. Away we go. Yeah, I made this video like showcasing how much I love Gamma, and like we haven't even gotten to him yet, and I'm realizing how much I love Tails as a character. I'm doing it all in my Sunday's best. Actually, I dread this is better than my Sunday's best. <laughs> Around this time, Sonic is giving chase to the egg carrier in his version of the Red Mountain level. It's not too remarkable, I prefer Knuckles' version, but there is some cool underground level segments that are pretty neat. Eventually, Sonic hits a dead end and is about to lose the egg carrier, and also Amy. If only he could fly. Hey, Sonic! Tails, I'm glad you're okay. Tails and Sonic stories reunite on the new and improved Tornado 2. Oh, oh great, we have another Skype chase sequence. Well, while this is happening, Amy is shown locked in a prison cell on the egg carrier. A red, intimidating robot tries to coerce her into handing over the little bird. But after a short conversation, Amy is mysteriously set free by the red robot. Don't worry, I'm skimming over this now, but I will truly include it soon. Let's just get all our ducks lined up. But just to give a taste, this is my reaction to this scene years after the last time I played this game. This is genuinely one of the coolest characters. There's so many layers to this, it's insane. Like, it's absolutely flipping insane. And it's like, it's almost like so sad that it's almost like irresponsible to put it in a kid's game. <laughs> But it's so complex that it goes right over our fucking heads. And yet, when we're kids, we still sense it. Tread lightly so they don't hear us. Shut up, Amy. <laughs> we, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it genuinely has no business being this good of a fucking story. I don't know. Maybe I'm just tripping balls. It is dangerous here. In order to escape, we must do a whack-a-mole, or I guess whack-a-mobian minigame. We do so well that we unlock a spinning hammer move. 
and escape through the inner workings of the egg carrier. This level is called the Hot Shelter. Meanwhile, Sonic and Tails crash land onto the egg carrier after realizing Tails forgot to install landing onto the Tornado 2. And it's at this point that all four of our main protagonists are on the ship. Eggman causes the ship to change forms in order to confuse our heroes. Don't get too many ideas, you fools! You haven't seen the power this vessel really has! Get a load of piss! harder for us to get to the bridge. I hate it when he doesn't listen. <laughs> I bet you weren't expecting this. The only way you can get to me is through the sky deck. Find out if you can figure this one out. Sonic and Tails enter the sky deck level. It's around this point that Amy presses a button in the hot shelter that drains the water, making the segment more maneuverable. But in addition to this, I believe it also drains a pool on the egg carrier, allowing Knuckles to enter a different part of this sky deck level. This is one of my favorite parts of the game because you can see the events within the levels influencing the storylines of these other characters, sort of unwittingly. It's like teamwork without even trying. Sonic and Tails are beneath the ship, having to use what little railing there is to get into the ship. Tails' version of this level is by far the better one, just because of how fun it is to skip so much of the level with Tails' flight. But if you do want to feel the more high-stakes nature of this genuinely terrifying level, then you definitely want to play as Sonic. While this is all happening, Knuckles is already within the storage section of the Sky Deck, looking for Master Emerald Fragments, the last three, mind you. But some of them are trapped behind doors that Knuckles needs to open. Sonic and Tails eventually make it into the storage area as well. Around this time, Knuckles would have had to use a lever to mess with the tilt of the ship in order to open those doors hiding the shards. And I like to think that the moments that the tilt and gravity changes in Sonic's version of the Sky Deck are caused by Knuckles. And so it's so funny how all of these characters are fulfilling their own goals and ultimately feeding into each other's stories. It almost makes you feel bad for Eggman, these meddling Mobians mucking up your flagship craft. Now, for timing reasons, I believe it takes Knuckles a bit longer to find these emerald shards. But regardless, Sonic and Tails make it past the sky deck and onto the main deck of the egg carrier. Before I skip to the end of Amy's hot shelter level, I want to show a really cool scene in this level. When completing this color block puzzle, the screen shows Zero freaking out at us, and then he crashes through the screen. This is the closest thing we get to a jump scare in this game. I, I just love to hate this robot. <laughs> Anyways, we escape from within the hot shelter and onto the main deck of the egg carrier. No, oh, whoops, I'm getting ahead of myself. We are first taken to another vision sequence. Huh? What's this place? You're safe with me. In this scene, it's the Cal's first time coming across the Chow. She ingratiates herself to them, and they approach her, all cute and curious-like. She even carries one like a like a baby, and it's it's very adorable. But it's also kind of puzzling in a way. When we think of cute, we think of babies, puppies, kittens, tiny, small, cute, baby, infantile things. But the Chow aren't exactly that. Sure, they're tiny, chubby, have bulbous features that we find cute, but as a race of creatures, they're a bit more larger than that. They just happen to look cute. Their existence is to sing, bounce around, and frolic in the presence of the emeralds. I don't think they know how to be cute, they just simply are. And besides, these chow that we see in the cutscenes probably lived a lot longer than we realize. Their lifespans are quite vast. They can potentially reach across multiple reincarnations. 
But nonetheless, they are a defenseless, innocent race of creatures being guarded by this creature or presence within the waters. And we get confirmation that this presence is chaos. We don't see much of him before the camera angle changes, but it's definitely him. Now, whether or not Tikal is communicating with Chaos, the Master Emerald, or some sort of presence represented by the Master Emerald, I'm not entirely sure. I'm of the mind that there is a sort of principality that is represented by the Master Emerald, and Chaos is a sort of right hand, or in a way, archangel of the unknown presence. That aspect is a bit more floppy and theory crafty y, but we know for sure that Chaos is a present figure within these Tikal flashbacks. My hope is that the previous Knuckles dreams that allude to plans to invade the sacred ground don't come true, but only time will tell us that truth. Anyways, Sonic Tales and Amy's stories converge on the main deck of the Egg Carrier. Where do you think you're going, Amy? Eggman! You can't get away this easily. Sonic, help! Too late, buddy! Birdie! It's a Chaos Emerald! What? So the bird has been hiding a deep purple emerald this entire time. Was that the reason why Zero has been chasing it? Well, time will tell. But sadly, Eventually, this deep purple emerald is going to end up in Chaos because it is now in Eggman's custody. All Chaos emeralds have been seen and are in play. Uh, it's, uh, it's not looking good at all. I don't need you when I've got this. Gemma! At your service, sir. Dispose of these annoying pests. Give them all you got. Aye, aye, sir. We'll comply. I've got better things to do! Stop, Mr. Robot! Hold on. Before we go any further, let me tell you the story about my favorite video game character of all time, E-102, codename Gamma. Preparation complete. His birth starts roughly around the time of Sonic's exploration of the ice cap level. When we first play as Gamma, we get a unique cutscene, a first-hand look into the first moments of life that a robot of Eggman feels. Excellent! All systems, full power! Look at me! I'm your brilliant creator, Dr. Robotnik. You're the second of my E-100 model machines. E-102, codename Gamma. Gamma. That's right. You will now obey only me. First of all, let's talk about this amazing theme song. Gamma's leitmotif is identical to his official theme song, without any vocals. Intentional piano keys are layered atop a conveyor belt of percussion whose rotation is powered by a super subtle synth. Also, there are these like keyboard organs that play these chords. Like dun, dun, dun. What, what is that? I love that stuff. I'd like to know any more songs that have that kind of stuff. Anyways, anyways. Speaking of music, I want to point out that in the Dreamcast restoration mod that I used, it restored a lot of missing sound effects, one of them being a very horrid high frequency beat but I was able to actually single it out and dump it using an EQ in my editing software, so hopefully you won't be able to hear it much. Big thanks to one of the first commenters on this channel, Victor V. He's got some super informative videos on all things sound and music design, and his videos on EQs legit like re-emerged in my memory when I was taking on this predicament. I don't know if he still watches this channel, but regardless, he's been a big help. Come on, we're finishing season two off. We gotta remember the day ones after all. 
This area that we awaken is Dr. Eggman's remote base in the jungle that sort of popped out of nowhere. Within this room we can find Mecha Sonic and Metal Sonic in glass casings. We meet Eggman in the lower level and he mentions our brother, E101 Beta. He sort of mocks us, saying that while we aren't as advanced as Beta is, we will do just fine. This first level is very short, we just simply attack targets that resemble Tails and Knuckles, with our final target being Sonic. So already we are being conditioned to attack the heroes. I'm assuming that the E in E102 stands for Egg, and this would fit all of these robots of the E100 series sort of resemble eggs. Now this is very clever. An egg-shaped robot. What do eggs do? They hatch. Not only is there a shape similarity, but just a symbolic similarity. Keep this in mind for now. Gamma's levels are my favorite. They aren't necessarily fast paced, but there are sometimes creative ways you can speed through them. Holding down the action button, Gamma beams out a harmless laser pointer. Enemies within view of this laser will be saved as a target temporarily. When we let go of the action button, the laser will turn off and rockets will shoot out and home in on each target. It's super satisfying timing your laser to get as many enemies in view as possible and just launching an onslaught of rockets. When we pick up enough momentum, we lower to the ground and Gamma's legs will sort of collapse, lowering him to the ground like a, like a tank almost, increasing his movement speed. What's neat is that even when we lose momentum and stop, we still remain in this mode and pick up speed a lot quicker. The only thing that disengages this mode is jumping. Sadly, because of the conversion mod, it restored another annoying whirring sound, so I'll try to keep the footage showing this movement mode to a minimum. We destroy the Sonic doll and finish the level. I love how his victory animation is like is rigged. You can see the personality of Gamma, but strictly tethered to his robotic articulating parts. In typical Sonic Adventure fashion, our action stages are garnished with a boss fight. Okay then, Gamma. Here's your test. If you want to stay on board, you must be able to pass it. So pay attention to what I say. The almighty Egg Carrier is a flying fortress that needs a good crew. Come forth, Beta! <laughs> when I wanted somebody to hang out, I would say, hey, pull through. When I think kids these days say, slide. But now I'm just going to start saying, come forth, Beta. <laughs> come forth, Beta! Eggman, the toxic father figure, is already pitting his children against one another. He's a real Livia Soprano. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Our sibling, E101 Beta, is a really badass robot, rocking two cannons instead of one. Gee, Beta, two cannons? We can target both the projectiles our brother fires at us and, of course, our brother himself, only having to hit him three times to beat him. Eggman lauds Gamma for his performance, stating that he knew there was more to him that met the eye. Eggman rewards Gamma with permission to serve upon the Egg Carrier, implying that E101 would either be left here or perhaps thrown on the field as a grunt. Not entirely sure. But E101 non-verbally seems to beg Eggman for another chance, and Eggman responds, Okay, okay. We can always use a spare set of parts, I guess. Brutal. Our next scene shows three new, younger brothers that evidently have been activated since the last cutscene. In addition to the red E-102 Gamma, we have a blue E-103 Delta, the yellow E-104 Epsilon, and the hot pink E-105 Zeta. Fascinating. These four resemble the colors of the four main Mobian protagonists. Could the black E-101 Beta be a foreshadowing to Shadow the Hedgehog? Speaking of which, where is Beta? His absence is concerning, especially after that spare parts comment from Eggman. My apologies, let's let the boss speak. Aha, testing one, two, three. <clears throat> you, the Elite Egg Carrier crew are here today to hear a very special announcement. Behold, it's a tailed frog, very unique. This frog is absolutely vital to my plans. I command you to locate this frog immediately. You hear me? I don't care what it takes to get it. Just bring it to me. We haven't got time to waste, so come to attention. Interesting. So this explicitly shows Eggman's desire for Froggy. Now what's interesting is Eggman is not even aware that Froggy is holding one of the Chaos Emeralds. He seems to be more obsessed with that tail. 
the tail that was obtained after interacting with Chaos. Based on some clues, we can deduce that this is happening around the time that Sonic is pursuing Zero to rescue Amy. As Big the Cat, we can actually run into Sonic in the train station. When leaving, he sees Froggy run towards the Emerald Coast. Interesting, both Big the Cat and Gamma seem to be converging to the Emerald Coast. As Gamma, this level is another great way to grind out animals, since Gamma's levels are typically enemy heavy. However, because of Gamma's size and aversion to water, he is very difficult to navigate in the Chow Garden. There's nothing too notable here. It's funny how when playing as Gamma, Big the Cat is nowhere to be seen, but when playing as Big, this cutscene happens after catching Froggy. Froggy? Uh oh. No, hold on there. Come back, please. Give me my friend back. I'm begging you, please. Poor Big. He can catch fish all day, but he can't catch a break. It's a bit troublesome that this cutscene of the egg carrier lifting off from the juggle plays at inconsistent points of each character's story, but ultimately I don't think it causes too much confusion. It's now revealed in Big Storyline that he too was on the egg carrier while the rest of the heroes were wreaking havoc within it. Sorry. This place doesn't look familiar to me at all. But after Gamma obtains Froggy for Eggman, he too enters a dream sequence. Must determine location. Accessing data. The E100 series robot in this ancient setting is very interesting. No data found. Location unknown. This presents a problem. We can about face and explore the Knuckles Clan Temple District, but ultimately a cutscene is waiting for us at the Master Emerald. Creature. These little creatures are too vulnerable without its protection. This protection allows them to continue singing in peace. Even I was surprised the first time I saw him. Now my father is trying to take their sacred home. It seems his heart is closed off to us all. My true hope is that someday we'll understand each other. Cheese. For a kid's game, this game has some very solid writing. Tikal makes mentions of the closed off nature of her father's heart. He has a closed heart. This is a very, very, very big keep in mind. And also note that Tikal refers to a gentle, loving creature guarding the chow. She's obviously referring to chaos, but that's not how we know him. We don't know him as gentle or loving. So what must have happened between then and now to cause the gentle guardian of the Master Emerald and Chows to become what Eggman refers to as chaos, the god of destruction? This frog's the one we want. No, here's the real one. My frog is the right one. We emerge from this vision to a cutscene of all E100s presenting their frogs to Eggman. This is the only time we get to hear our siblings' voices. I'll summarize the rest of this. Eggman is incensed that none of the robots got the right froggy, calling them all dummies before realizing that Gamma has the correct frog. Eggman lauds Gamma once again and beams the other three siblings away, calling them hunks of junk. We can see not from the emotionless faces, but from the contorted bodies that these E100s are clearly distressed from this rejection, with Delta even turning towards Gamma, almost in a pleading manner before being beamed off. 
I keep mentioning emotions, temperaments, personalities with these robots. Robots are just machines that do preset functions, but despite this, Beta has a sense of self-preservation and dignity, wanting another chance to please Eggman. Delta shows fear when being sent off. Perhaps because Gamma has yet to experience this disappointment of Eggman, he hasn't shown any emotion just yet. However, seeing this must have stirred something within him. But where is this temperament, this personality, this conscience coming from? You will get a new assignment. This one's easy. Go to the room through that glass door. Once there, you'll find a girl and a bird. Just get me that bird. Now, go! Gamma has another task from Eggman to confront the recently captured Amy and retrieve the bird from her. Is this the one? She's through the door on the right hand side, but Gamma gets switched up by the rotating floor and goes through the wrong room and sees this. Gamma has witnessed his older brother in the midst of being torn apart and rearranged into something unrecognizable. As humans, you and I may just see it as the modular nature of robotics. But from the perspective of a conscious robot, this is pure body horror. Gamma's reaction is a thin veil of stoicism, but it's evident that he's shaken by this. Beta? This is the wrong room. Now here's something cool. Let's say we wanted to take a break from Gamma's story and continue another character's story. When we boot up an in-progress storyline, we get a bit of a catch-me-up, a hint as to where to go next, and what the character might be feeling at that moment of the story. Here's what Gamma says about his predicament right after witnessing Beta's rearrangement, but right before meeting Amy. E-102, codename Gamma. I am a robot. I was created by Dr. Robotnik. My next mission is go to the cell and take the bird from the girl. I accidentally entered the wrong room and saw E-101 Beta. I confirmed this discovery via ID signal. This does not compute. Continue with mission. This does not compute. He's experiencing some sort of dissonance, and I feel that meeting Amy will be the robotic straw that breaks the robotic camel's robotic back. I'll go ahead and play this great cutscene out, since I robbed you all during Amy's playthrough. Go away! Give me the bird. No way! Resistance is futile. Give me the bird. I said no! Why not? None of your business, why not? know why you want it. Data unavailable. You don't even know? I bet you'd be mean to him, you bully. Why not help us out instead? Don't you know how bad I feel? Does not confuse. Why try to save that which is useless to you? Does not compute. Gamma says something slightly similar in Amy's cutscene. Insufficient data. You have feelings for something you know nothing about. Illogical. Now back to Gamma. I feel sorry for you. Eggman failed to give you feelings. Wait a minute, Birdie! Dangerous here. Hurry, we'll be arriving at the Mystic Ruins base soon. So, you're not like those other robots, huh? You truly are a good person inside, aren't you? I guess we can be friends then. Take care, okay? Gamma states that he can't compute the desire to care for something that one knows nothing about. The idea that one would lay down one's life to save another's is illogical to him. And yet, he's so fervently serving 
of Eggman. Evidently that changes today because Gamma goes against Eggman's wishes and frees Amy. But what changed his mind? Looking into the eyes of the little bird? Hmm. Whatever seemed to be non-verbally communicated evidently shook Gamma to his core. His core. Hmm. This bird appealed to something inside of Gamma, and I don't just mean that metaphorically. Keep this in mind. I notice a dark colored egg in the jail cell next to Amy. So I pick it up and take it with me in hopes to hatch the chow from within it. We hear Eggman call to assist him on the top deck of the ship and to also pick up a jetpack on our way up. Real quick, I hatch that dark egg in the egg carrier's chow garden and return to the main game. I enter the wrong room and notice another upgrade in the waters below. This is an optional lore for Big the Cat. We enter the room across, find our jetpack and make our way to the top deck of the ship. The storylines of Gamma, Sonic, Tails, and Amy converging into one. This is where we left off before going all in to Gamma's story. How can I serve you, Dr. Robotnik? Eradicate all of those menaces! Give them all you got! Aye, aye, sir. I will comply. I'm counting on you, Gamma! There are four versions of this scene. With Gamma, we defeat Sonic. When playing as Tails, we defeat Gamma as Tails. And with Sonic, it's Sonic who defeats Gamma. As Amy, we skip over the battle and it seems to default to Sonic beating Gamma. In Gamma's scene, just as he's about to land a finishing shot on Sonic, Amy intervenes and places herself in front of Sonic. Stop, Mr. Robot! We see the reverse, of course, in the other versions of this cutscene. Sonic and Tails just take her word, which is sweet. Okay, if you say so, you have your reasons, I guess. Okay, whatever you say. You must have your reasons. Here's Amy's appeal to Gamma. Amy? Hey, Mr. Robot. I know you're not an evil sword. Wait, remember me? Amy! Oh, I really don't get this. Sonic, look! The A carrier is losing altitude! We've got to split! Take Amy and go! What will you do? I'll nail that Eggman! He must be stopped at all costs! Thanks again for saving me as usual, Sonic! And how are you, my metal friend? It's dangerous here! Why not leave Eggman and come with us? Why do you help me? I told you we'd be friends the next time we met. Even Birdie wants the best for you. You must ditch that awful Eggman. Amy, come on! So from here, the characters enter the final phases of their stories, except Gamma. His story seems to really begin here. From here, we will complete Gamma and Amy's story, and afterwards come back to this point to then finish off the main storyline. We'll meet again, my robot friend! While the Froggy, Master Emerald, and Chaos Emerald motivations merge into the main storyline, the flicky side story will splinter off into a separate storyline for Amy and Gamma. Oh, you didn't know that this bird, which we recently learned is a Mobini, is also called a flicky? Yes, a flicky is apparently a subspecies of Mobini that includes these big eyes, round-headed birdies. Flicky! Before zeroing in on Gamma and Amy's storyline, I want to point out something interesting. After beating Gamma as Sonic, we can talk to him before confronting Eggman. Gamma is undergoing an auto-recovery system. Auto-recovery system activated. So Gamma has the means for self-repair, the motive and means of self-preservation. 
this isn't super important, but I think it's a detail again we take for granted that will add a lot of extra meaning to the ending of Gamma's story. Gamma flies off the carrier and so begins his arc. Dr. Robotnik, enemy, master registration, deleted, E-Series, friends, must save. Okay, sweet. Gamma is going to save his siblings, his friends, maybe free them from Eggman's clutches, give them a sort of pamphlet that informs them of the error of their ways. This is great, let's keep going. Our first mission is in Windy Valley. Wait, hold on. Destroy E-103? I thought we were saving them. What? We make it to the end of the level and there he is. Delta. Are we going to save him? Destroy him? Yeah, it's a boss fight. We are destroying our sibling. What the hell, Gamma? I do my best to delay the inevitable, but eventually Gamma destroys Delta, killing his sibling. Wait, an animal was freed from within Delta. That's right. These are Eggman's robots, after all. So if Delta has an animal inside of him, then Gamma must have one inside of him as well. Keep this in mind, this will come into play later. But let's go back to what just happened. Gamma wanted to save his friends, save his sibling. Even after killing Delta, finishing this level, you can hear Gamma say, rescue mission complete. Did he malfunction? Is this that one kind of conundrum that robots go into when uh, they, they kill things to save them or something like that? It's a trope we see once in a while in, in sci-fi pop culture. Something isn't right here. But regardless, Delta has been put out of commission and Gamma is going down a troubling path. We get to the Red Mountain level to rescue E-104 Epsilon. I prefer Gamma's Red Mountain level over Sonic's, and for the first time I was able to nail Gamma's wall run here. Pretty cool. I could never pull that off as a kid. We get a good look at Epsilon, knowing what is to come. We get into a boss fight and make short work of our yellow metallic brother. E-104 Epsilon, rescue E-103 Delta, E-104 Epsilon. Rescue mission accomplished. E-105 Zeta. E-101 Beta. Location unknown. Perhaps aboard the egg carrier. Now that we're at the part of the story where Eggman's ship has crash landed into the water, we can now take a raft or speedboat from the Mystic Ruins or Station Square, respectively, to the egg carrier. E-Series Zeta. Beginning search. Accessing data. Hot shelter. E series location confirmed. Unlocking hot shelter sector now. We make our way into the hot shelter. This is my favorite gamma level. The ramps and plethora of item capsules is great, with some really cool camera segments that emphasize memorable set pieces, like these robo monkeys on stacked boxes. There's these cool claws that take you around the level, but my favorite part about this level is the monorail segment. But eventually, this level takes us to... Holy crap! E-105 Zeta! Just like Beta, Zeta has been mutilated, reformed into a, a, a fixture, a stationary robot, unable to move, just rotating in this roundabout deep within the egg carrier. Trap! Ha! Ha ha! A Mobini trapped within a robot, trapped within the egg carrier. Egg, egg, egg. It's like trapped within... Uh, okay, well, that's interesting. The, but in a floppiness, this is so cruel. While his siblings got field work, Zeta got a brutal deal. We make short work of our poor, tortured Zeta. Hmm. There's something peculiar about these animals, or Mobinis, that we are freeing from these robots. Well, let's keep playing. E-105 Zeta rescue complete. Units remaining... Gamma. 
Well, hold on. He plans on also destroying himself? Now, I really think he's malfunctioned. But luckily, before taking any drastic... Oh, shit. Before Beta. taking any drastic measures, he sets his sights on his last remaining brother, Beta. We fight against Beta Mark II. He's got new dual blasters, can fly and dodge with ease, send a plethora of homing missiles, and has a dash attack. Despite the sadness of having to destroy our brother, this song is kinda funky. We finally destroy Beta. Mission complete. Hold on, this is very familiar. Gamma! After confirming the kill, we see a flicky bird emerge from within Beta. Gamma could self-repair, he's shown that he has that ability. He walks away, perhaps with the intention of saving himself, and suddenly, not an image, not a bit of data, a memory. Okay, let's recap what the hell just happened. Gamma had destroyed Beta in his malfunctioned desire to save his siblings. And I believe for a moment that Gamma had the intention of self-repairing and saving himself. But alas, he realizes that the bird that has been following around Amy, the bird that has been inside Beta, and the bird that still remains within himself are all related. Gamma then realizes what it means to care for something you know nothing about. Gamma allows himself to explode ending his own short life to free the trapped animal within him. At least that's what I wished was the implication of this ending. If you've seen my video on Who's Lila, you might remember that I have an affinity for the, uh, the tarot card of the Hanged Man. I like stories that involve self-sacrifice, the voluntary giving up of oneself for the good of others. That whole kind of story, it demolishes me, it utterly slays me. And that was the story I was picking up on when I was taking this uh, dive back into Gamma's story for this video. And maybe subconsciously that's what I was picking up on as a kid as well, which is why this story moved me so much as a kid. 
As a child, we're so used to seeing stories of determination, the triumph over evil, the power of friendship. And so for the first time coming across this story where the good ending was the willful death of the hero, it, it's just, it's, it's awesome, it's crazy. Now that alone would have caused me to blubber, seeing my favorite character die on screen like that for a greater cause. But the musical ge genius of Sega absolutely compounded that with that off-guard, just somber rendition of Gamma's theme song. That whole takeaway, this idea that this was the sacrifice of one life to free another, it might not actually be the case. The title of the song that plays when Gamma blows up is called Unbound. And let me emphasize this final picture that shows the two birds. At the end of every credit sequence, we see a sweet picture to send off the story of the character whose story we've completed. But in Gamma's case, it shows the birds, both within Beta and himself. These are the first couple of clues of the true implications of Gamma's ending. Now let's hold that thought. To get the rest of these birds' stories, Let's tie a nice coquette bow around Amy's story. Going back to when the heroes fled the ship as it was free falling into the ocean, we see Tails carry Amy off the ship, using his tails to propel himself. Amy waves goodbye to Tails and touches base with the birdie. I wonder what Sonic is doing. He's always rescuing me, it seems. I should be more independent. You know you sure surprised me by having a Chaos Emerald with you. No wonder they were after you, my feathered friend. Hey, a pendant! Wow! So I'll help you find your family. Does Eggman have them captive now? I bet he does. So I'll help you find your family. I've come this far. I may as well go all the way. That robot said Dr. Eggman's base is in the so what do you say we check it out? We make our way to Eggman's base. All this time I thought this was a sort of pop-up satellite base to his operations, but I guess it's just his hidden lair that only revealed itself once his full operation was underway. Again, we are accosted by Zero, which now I've come to learn is named E100 Zero, a sort of prototype to the E100 series. Despite Eggman having already gotten the emerald from the bird, Zero is still pursuing Amy and that bird. Ah, let's skip to the finish line of this level, but first I want to feature a hilarious instance when you can absolutely body Zero and knock him off the map. Yes, get fucked. get fucked zero. Of course, this doesn't put him out of commission. He just spawns back in the next preset location. Fuck you, you stupid. All right. But alas, no relatives of the bird were found, so that mission was a bit of a folly. Amy has the idea to go back to the egg carrier, which I find really brave about her character. Much like Tails, she's relied so much on Sonic to be the savior, but in both their stories, they rise to the occasion and become heroes themselves. She's going back to the dangerous place she just escaped from to reunite this birdie with his family. We get onto the egg carrier and this cutscene takes place. Bro, this is nuts. It fucking converges, dude. Oh no! <laughs> There's a fucking Mr. Incredibles meme in here, dude. We reunite the family. Apologies for the ugly laugh. It was at this time I believed in the dead Gamma theory, so I was thinking that this would be a funny Mr. Incredibles, those who know, those who don't know meme. Anyways, let's play out this touching sequence.
we make quick work of this a-hole robot. And I want to point out something kind of interesting. Zero has no animal within him. So perhaps the bird that he's been chasing escaped from within him. Huh, a robot chasing after his soul. No Please way. wake up, birdie! Motherfucker, don't fuck with me like this, dog. Are you okay? Can you fly? I know I hammed up the whole death of Gamma making me cry thing, but in reality, I've played this game enough to not let it get to me anymore. But at the time of recording this game footage, I was believing that Gamma did sacrifice himself to free the bird, giving this scene a whole new meaning, and evidently it caught me off guard. Ah! Ah! <laughs> That's the sound of a man holding back tears. <laughs> What a great ending. This would be the final end to the Separated Birds arc. Now with that full context, let's finish our theorizing of Gamma's ending's implication. Although I prefer the dead Gamma theory, I think the more agreed upon belief is that Gamma is the bird that was trapped within him. Beta was that bird trapped within him. When Gamma proclaimed his mission to save his friends, he really meant that. He was saving his friends, perhaps even siblings, from within those vessels. If you notice, every single animal within the E100 series of this game have birds contained within them. A parrot, a sparrow, a peacock, and two flickies. And sadly, or I guess happily, I can't cope, or uncope, my dead gamma theory into existence. Because there is one big revealing factor in all of this. Those catch-me-up segments whenever you boot up a character's story. If we boot up Gamma's story and continue after his mission defeating Delta, but before Epsilon, Gamma's inner thoughts are as follows. I'm E-102 Gamma. I have destroyed Dr. Robotnik's evil machine by my own volition. Now I will rescue the animals. I rescued E-103 Delta in the Windy Valley. Search for other E-Series commencing. He is fully aware of the trapped animals, and fully aware that he is destroying these robots, destroying Robotnik's evil machine by his own volition. His mission is simply to destroy the robots and free the animals within. It just so happens that he still refers to these animals as their E-Series code names, but in the end, in Gamma's mind, he is fully aware of these implications. He isn't erroneously killing his siblings, he's intentionally freeing them and he doesn't sacrifice himself to free another soul, he destroys this vessel, Machine for Evil, to make himself unbound. So, the story is a lot more of a happy ending than I realized, not even Peric in the slightest. Does that mean that Gamma's story is not as profound as I thought it was just because there isn't this martyr narrative? No, not at all. Think about this for a moment. This bird that was trapped inside of Gamma, the whole of its conscience, its personality was suspended and dulled wiped in a way, at least temporarily, housed inside this cold, metallic, cruel vessel, an egg. And so when Gamma was assembled, born, in a reverse manner, instead of hatching from the egg, being encapsulated into this egg, 
this bird was forced to live a new life as one of Eggman's robots. This is assuming that these animals that are trapped inside the robots are temporarily suffering from some sort of amnesia, not remembering their past life, not knowing the implications of this new existence. Because if they were fully aware, then all the robots would just jump into the water and destroy themselves so that the animals within could free themselves. There has to be some sort of memory wipe, some sort of a enthrallment. And we see as much in Gamma's case when he realizes that he is not him, but within him, bound to this metallic vessel. And so it's fitting that the E100 series are all shaped like eggs, for when they hatch, the animals within gain a new life, or I should say a continuation of the old life that they had. What's very interesting and oddly terrifying is that these robots, these animals living a life anew inside these robots are actually terrified of death. They have a sense and desire for self-preservation. We see as much when we see the other robots fear rejection and being scrapped by Eggman. And that is because their new existence is now bound to this metallic flesh. <laughs> so Gamma makes the decision on behalf of his brothers to free them from these vessels. And then when given the chance to let himself get blown up, he allows it, sacrificing his flesh for salvation. It's kind of fitting that this video is being done in the month of April. Compared to the dead Gamma theory, I think the unbound Gamma theory is a lot more happier, a uh, less strings attached happy ending. But who knows, maybe these clues that point towards the unbound Gamma theory, this commonly agreed upon canon of his fate, were added in after the fact, perhaps within the English dub or even release of Sonic Adventure. It wouldn't be the first time Sega changed the English release of their product to be a little bit less grim. If you know, you know. But that concludes Gamma's story. The reason why I even made this video in the first place. But we're so close to the end anyway, so might as well give the rest of Sonic Adventure the flawed peacock theory. Oh, you didn't know this? Yeah, it's, it's flawed peacock now. Listen, I'm pushing 30. I have my reasons, okay? Don't worry, not much else is going to change. Trust me. No, in all honesty, I just want to start uh, being able to openly talk about the channel with like family members and, and, and stuff like that without having to really emphasize the flaw peacock. So flawed peacock will have to be a good compromise. While Gamma, Tails, and Amy were heading to the sea level after their big showdown, Sonic made his way to Eggman. Well, what about Knuckles and Big? Well, Knuckles collects the last three fragments of the Master Emerald in the sky deck. Before making it to the top deck of the ship, though, he is taken to another dream sequence. To restore the Master Emerald. Huh? Oh, oh no. Not again. What is the meaning of this? This doesn't bode well. The sacred grounds of the Master Emerald are set aflame. Its ruined form is looking a lot like the island that Knuckles has been guarding. Hey, what happened here? I couldn't stop them. They came, and, and my father. I had no idea how bad this would turn out. I'm shocked. And did you hear that? That roar. Was that chaos? I'm shocked. Look, it's the emerald. Wait. Is this a dream? It's more like a nightmare. So Tikal failed to prevent her father's destruction of the Chow's sacred grounds. I can already piece together a possible motivation for chaos to become such a destructive, godly force. Seeing the atrocities of the Knuckles clan against these innocent Chow likely enraged chaos. And regardless of the outcome of this war, which side won, evidently it hardened chaos's heart, or in other words, closed his heart. Knuckles gets his bearings and the helper sprite tells him to go and help his friends on the top deck. Meanwhile, Sonic shifts the shape of the ship back to its original form. Oh, thanks, Froggy. Looks like he needs my help. At the same time, Big locates Froggy and catches him in the hot shelter. And again, we've got another dream sequence. 
We're together again at last, huh? Huh? That's strange. Where am I? Froggy? Wow. Is it alright for me to be here? So do you... trust me? So these are the seven emeralds. <gasps> Could it be? The servers are the seven Chaos Emeralds, unified by one that is the controller. The seven Chaos, the controller itself. Could this be the Emerald that controls the seven Chaos? It looks like this vision depicts the first time Tikal has come across the Master Emerald, placing this dream very early on in the sort of Tikal vision chronology. Big wakes from this dream. Froggy? I don't like the looks of this place. If something happens now, there's no point to my rescuing you. I don't know who would bother to save us both. We better get going, buddy! It's at this time Sonic has shifted the ship back to its original form and Big is able to escape to the top deck. Big gets to the top deck and we even see Tails' crashed tornado too. Oh neat! We can even see Chaos in its fourth form. Maybe we should go check it out. So, I see you're trying to escape. I'm right on time. Chaos, grab him! Get that frog! And don't forget the Chaos Emerald! Alright, and now for the frog. The frog is possessed by your tail! Once you get your tail, you'll be complete and ultra strong! Froggy loses the Chaos Tail, and that tail is absorbed to become an attribute of Chaos himself. So just like with the Chow, when Chaos absorbed or is introduced to an animal, it absorbed and took on its part, and gains one of its attributes. This solidifies Chaos as a sort of mimicry or font of which the Chow were designed. If I really wanted to get floppy, it's almost as if the Chow were created in Chaos's image. Or it could be the other way around. It's really... It's a bit floppy. Nonetheless, I think this mimicry, this mirroring, does confirm Chaos as a god of the Chow, or at the very least, a guardian principality over the Chow. And now that Froggy has lost the tail, he is no longer possessed. But that means he is now trapped and fully aware of it. Oh hey, it's Sonic. Unbelievable! Look what happened! Chaos has transformed again! Huh? <laughs> oh, gotta go! Froggy? I'll save you! Don't worry, Pally! So, he's your friend, eh? No sweat! I'll get him back! Watch! I him. really like this sequence, so this is what I believe to be the chronological order of events. As big, we fish Froggy out of the watery chaos. Careful, Froggy! Don't worry! We'll get you back! It's so anticlimactic. Something's... Hooray! Froggy! <laughs> I won't let them take you away again. Go! Go on and get out of here! I'll do the rest! Oh, okay! Thanks! Come, little buddy! Time to get a move on! Huh? What? Hey, maybe we could use this. But I don't know the first thing about it. Oh well, I'll give it a try anyway. Goodbye, Big and Froggy. Now, where were we? <laughs> now I have six of the Chaos Emeralds. There's only one more left to find. 
I even found Chaos's missing tail. You won't get away with this, you madman. I will. You're no match for Chaos, even though he's not perfected yet. Okay, Chaos, destroy them all immediately. After Big Fish is out froggy, as Sonic we dodge cryo bombs being dropped onto us by Eggman. We deactivate them and we can either toss them into Chaos 6's mouth or allow him to suck it up. This causes him to freeze momentarily and allow us to do damage. We do this a couple of times and defeat Chaos, momentarily at least. Eggman rage quits and Sonic follows, but not before Knuckles gets a few words in. No way! I can't believe this! Sonic! Hey there Knuckles! Glad you finally made it! I thought you got lost or something. Until we meet again, Sonic! Stop! Come back here! I'd better let Sonic handle it from here. He'll do okay. Now, I must return to Angel Island and the Master Emerald. No, it can't be! I guess he didn't get enough the first time. You can't stop me from restoring the Master Emerald. All right, one more time. We defeat Chaos as Knuckles and he scoops up six of the seven emeralds for safekeeping. Is that all you've got? Yeah, you're finished. What's left now is to return the Master Emerald safely to my island. I haven't been updating this. Well, obviously the yellow Chaos Emerald was in Chaos, but now they're all in the custody of Knuckles. All except one. Where was that red one again? Oh yes, in Tails' Tornado 2. The, you know, the Tornado 2 that Big commandeered. But alas, we can now be safe knowing that these Chaos Emeralds are safe. For now. So now it's at this exact moment, every single playable character flees from the free-falling egg carrier. We already know the fate of Gamma and Amy. Let's go ahead and say our final goodbyes to Big. He crash lands at his treehouse in the Mystic Jungle and has his final cutscene where he... Ah, screw it. Let me show it. And now, Knuckles. This should do it. Perfect. All is well now. The Master Emerald and the island have been restored. It looks like Angel Island has restored its celestial aspect, now rising back into the sky. I'll probably be on this floating island forever, guarding the Master Emerald again. I may not know the whole story behind this, but perhaps it's better that way. I'm at peace once more. Ah, I hate Eggman. Where's this? And now Sonic, we aren't quite finished with him just yet. We follow the helper sprite into the temple and enter Sonic's version of the Lost World. While I don't like this level, it's a very good one and a quintessential Sonic Adventure level. You've got long serpentine corridors to speed through, two black corridors with hazards, a creative platform and timing segment, some tomb raiding settings like a brief outdoor sequence where we have a very cool view of the jungles beneath. There is this dark sequence where we have to aim lights at mirrors that I'm just not a huge fan of, but I bet speedrunners ignore the mirrors and know exactly where to run and jump. And finally, there's these wall-running, gravity-defying segments that Sega loves in their later parts of Sonic Adventure games. We get to the end and get another revelation of Chaos's origin. I want you to note how it's Tikal's sprite leading Sonic through this corridor, and we even see those ripples in the water. We might think that this is supposed to be the presence of Chaos. Wow, what's this? A mural! 
but I think this might be something else. Both of these presences are trying to warn Sonic of this world-ending monster, Chaos. This next cutscene is very interesting. We see Tikal either just having gotten up from her prone state that we've seen in the Knuckles vision, or right before being knocked in her prone state, but nonetheless about to do something, make a deal with the Master Emerald and fix the imbalance and discord struck on Angel Island. Sonic wakes from the vision and follows Eggman to his final level, the final egg. There are parts of this level that I feel are detrimental to Sonic's speedster flow to his gameplay. However, there are some cool moments like with these conveyor belts. There are some platforming segments that reward you for bravery and leaps of faith, some cool corridor segments, but some of these platforming segments I feel just don't fit for Sonic's gameplay. We get these exploding robots that are neat and mess with Sonic's jump dash targeting, and then there's these fans. I hate these things. I feel like even though they are reliable, they're always on the verge of not working and letting Sonic fall at any moment. But I think that's the point. We beat this level and we enter what I believe is an adequately challenging boss fight. Well, if it isn't my pal Sonic, I'm surprised you made it this far. Eggman's Viper is a pain in the ass, but if you know how to fight him, it shouldn't be too bad. Keep your speed up to avoid his rapid fire laser. You can get your hits in when Eggman opens up his hatch and gloats at you. For the single shot laser attack, same principle, just keep your speed up. After the first time you do damage, Eggman will gloat at you from a distance, but you can close in that distance by jump dashing. Tap the jump button, but not too fast, to bounce on each vertebrae of the Eggman Viper to make your way up to the weak spot. Don't worry, Sonic will bounce to the other side of the map. For this sort of charging rapid fire laser beam attack, I don't know how I avoided damage. Perhaps touching the vehicle itself doesn't damage you, so just kind of jump into it to avoid being blasted by the lasers. But if you aren't confident and need to take damage, make sure you're doing it as close to the middle of the lane as possible so you don't get pushed off the edge. And finally, you've got this Mega Man-like segment. Just jump on the spinning platform and let it take you close to get your final shots in on Eggman. When you finally do beat Eggman, he will fly all over the place and will randomly break one of the platforms. Just avoid it and then afterwards stay put because he just breaks one of them. I panicked and thought he was going to go for a second time and I made a very poorly calculated jump. No. Holy sh**. On the fizzucking kizusp. Holy sh**. Get away, get away, get away, get away. Do not hit me. Do not fucking Watch hit out. me. He's up to something. Yeah, he is. I know he's going to do some shit. Oh, f you. I knew it. 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 No! After beating the Viper, we see Eggman get sent off, and this would be Sonic's final cutscene before the credits. But I'm going to creatively splice this to make it work with Tails' story. So Eggman is defeated and flees to Station Square. That's Eggman! I wonder what happened to Sonic? I'm finished. Chaos was defeated, and now my egg carrier is ruined. No matter. I will destroy Station Square anyway. If that missile is launched, Ready? Fire! Was a dud. I can't believe this. Ah, I'll go and deal with this myself. Eggman is such a bastard. Oh no! I better get you that missile before he detonates it. I've got to get it before Eggman. The fate of Station Square depends on me. Oh, Sonic. I've changed a lot since I've started hanging with Sonic. But I can't depend on him forever. 
I know I can do this by myself. Okay, Eggman, bring it on! You go Tails! This is definitely my favorite Tails level. For one reason, because we are racing Eggman instead of Sonic, and his voice line just made me laugh as a kid. You think you can keep up with me? What? He's caught up? He, I think he's saying, what? He's caught up! But when I was a kid, especially on those little tiny speakers on the CRT TV, I'm like, what is he saying? What? Iscata? What's Iscata? I'm like, what's Iscata? <laughs> is that like a dish? What? Iscata? In this level, you got all sorts of fun ways to just zoom past Eggman, but eventually we get to the bomb and disarm it. Oh no! It's Robotnik! So you beat me to the missile, you little pest. I will make you all pay for this. You fool. Away, before I make mincemeat out of you. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I can do this. The Egg Walker is a lot easier compared to the Egg Viper. Also, the way that Eggman's lines interrupt each other is super funny. <laughs> Get a load of this. Get a load of this. Get a load of this. No way. I can't believe it. Ah! We defeat the walker and get a really cool ending for Tails. Hey, I did it! You saved the day! You're the best! I did it all by myself! Now, let's go ahead and splice both Tails and Sonic's endings together. Is that it? This story feels kind of incomplete. I mean, most loose ends are tied up. The Master Emerald has been restored. Big and Froggy have gotten reunited. Eggman got his shit pushed in. And the Flicky Trio are also reunited. But that's the thing. The seven Chaos Emeralds, that red one, is still in the jungle, where Big evidently crash-landed the Tornado 2. I mean, sure, Chaos 6 was thrice defeated, but I would expect some sort of cutscene of him being bound back into the Master Emerald. Something tells me we're not quite finished just yet. Not only are we missing a Chaos Emerald, we're also missing one more Tikal cutscene and some context as to surrounding what happened to the Knuckles clan. What were the outcomes of this war? The details surrounding Chaos's hardening of his heart. How we got trapped inside the Master Emerald and when he broke out, Tikal was also there with him. Remember, this was the beginning cutscene with Knuckles. We do know, however, that Chaos was the guardian of the cute, cuddly Chow, and the Knuckles clan evidently almost wiping out, genociding the innocent Chow, introduced a hatred, an unquenchable desire for revenge and destruction into the heart of Chaos. <laughs> I'm talking in circles. In honor of those fallen Chow, let me tell you a little bit about the Chow Garden and how the Chow interact with the Mobians and humans in the modern day of the Sonic Adventure universe. And I'll also introduce you to some of my Chow as well. The Chow Garden is what sets the adventure series apart from every other Sonic game. You've got a phenomenal formula, an addicting gameplay loop, high octane action packed levels where you collect rings and save animals from enemies and then wind down, chilling with these cute little creatures, buying them food with those rings, and having the animals you save teach them and evolve them. There are so many little systems at play within these Chow's lifespans. For example, they have individual relationships with your characters. I always default to Tails when playing these games, so naturally my Chow all have a great relationship with him. 
Some benefits to having a friendship with these chows is when you whistle, they eagerly run towards you, which is cute. They are elated when you pick them up, which is cute. And they occasionally draw images of you on the floor, which is cute. Drawing, singing, chest beating, wearing hats, farting are all some of the many skills that Chow can learn from being introduced to these animals. Aside from this, animals will also affect the skills of your Chows, with the exception of stamina, which is increased with food. Speaking of food, you can also affect the alignment of the Chow with the fruit you give them. There is a hero fruit, which looks like a big lemon, and a dark fruit, which looks like a pepper. As you play in the Chow Garden, each Chow will slowly grow older, and when they age up into adulthood, their physical form will change based on what types of animals you've been introducing to them and what alignment they have. Also, when you give these animals to your Chow, you may find the animal parts not really fitting the Chow. But don't worry, when they age up, the animal parts grow in size and sometimes change into cool colors to better match the Chow's size. Now, let me show you what kind of Chow I've been raising throughout these adventures behind the scenes. Of course, starting off, we have my boy Peacock, who ended up evolving into a neutral run type Chow. My second Chow to evolve was GM, a neutral power type. I personally like the way the neutral adult Chows look, although you are missing out on that special little bulb atop their head. Hero Chows get halos, dark Chows get those little spike balls. Next is Tofu, my first hero Chow, a hero normal type. And then we got Zero, a hero power type. Then we've got Vui, a hero fly type, Hermes, a dark swim type, and Dreamy, a dark normal type. Hermes is my biggest overachiever. I've been able to win a significant amount of races with him. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, these skills that the Chow learn are used in races. Swim affects speed in water, fly affects the distance when leaping from ledges, power affects climb speed, and run of course affects run speed, and stamina I believe affects how frequently your Chow gets tired in a race. The Chow race are fun, but they're not super important. These extracurricular activities become a lot more fleshed out in the Sonic Adventure 2 game. It's sort of become a meme among Sonic fans. Even when I learn of a new Sonic game being released, I always ask, is there gonna be a Chow Garden? And every single time, I'm disappointed. Honestly, if the Chow Garden was released in a game today, it probably would be inundated with microtransactions and uh, poorly designed game flow so that you're incentivized to pay for quality of life stuff. But I don't know, I mean, I'm not sure if Sega's, you know, game monetization practices. But if you are a particularly jaded gamer to, in the modern day, you probably are thankful that there is no Chow Garden, that we got them when we did. But enough of that. Now that we have shown that Mobians, humans, and Chow can live in harmony, let's go ahead and finally finish this game once and for all. Now that we've 100% completed all of the character stories, we now have access to a new character. Okay, what the hell, spoiler much? I, I won't show it to preserve the Kino. When we, <laughs> when we select the character, we hear this funny noise. Mm. What? Mm. <laughs> Trust me, that's not a hint at all. We have a cocktail of cutscenes to go through. First, we see a shot low to the ground, zooming into the Chaos Emerald within the propeller of the Tornado 2, crash landed in Big's jungle domain. This could just be a sort of, a, I think, establishing shot to remind us of that seventh missing emerald that didn't make it into Chaos. But part of me thinks that this might be the perspective of Chaos in his puddle form, creeping towards the emerald. After this, we see that Angel Island is falling back to the ground. What happened? What changed? The Master Emerald has been fixed. Eggman is in the jungle, seething about Sonic and bumps into Chaos. If that red emerald isn't in Chaos's possession, it will be soon. Meanwhile, Knuckles is confused as to why Angel Island won't stay in the sky. He mulls over the predicament, pondering over the Chaos Emeralds. It's interesting that his birth duty is to protect the Master Emerald, but he seems to be a bit oblivious when it comes to the Chaos Emeralds themselves. He mentions going to Sonic for advice, which is very interesting. You would expect the Echidna to know more than Sonic. But suddenly, Knuckles sees a despairing Eggman. This is terrible! Chaos is... Is what? Has Chaos turned on Eggman? The next scene shows Tails interrupting Sonic's well-earned siesta to inform him that the Angel Island has fallen. Angel Island is falling again! Hey, no way! Who 
blew it this time. Yeah, tell me about it. I'll play the rest of this out. Sonic, uh, sorry. Knuckles and Eggman, what happened here? He stole my Chaos Emeralds, and Chaos is still alive. What? Ah, he's not going to get away with this. Hey, Eggman, wait up. Sonic, Chaos is a fearsome beast. If he gets that last Chaos Emerald, we're done for. No need to explain. We'll get on it. Tails? Right. What? Oh, jeez! This place... It looks familiar. It's not a dream after all. Get out of my way! No way! Did you hear what I said? I won't obey! We need those seven emeralds to give us total power! It's power for the people! And they are your people too, you know! We must get that emerald! Greed is our enemy! Once it starts, you will always want more! Please don't do this! I beg you! Bah! I don't listen to the words of a child! Ready, men? Charge! Father! Are you all right? Uh, I think so. Oh my gosh! No, no, no! Wait up! The seven emeralds are the servers. Chaos is power enriched by the heart. The controller serves to unify the chaos. <gasps> The seven emeralds can change our thoughts into power. If this emerald controls that power, please, you must stop him. I messed up and got ahead of myself, and I I, I, I wrote, the, I, I did the final whiteboard. We have one more segment before the final uh, Tikal whiteboard, so just completely ignore what's behind my head. The seven emeralds are the servers. Chaos is power enriched by the heart, and the controller is used to unify the chaos. Hmm. Enriched by the heart. Pachachamak, the leader of the Knuckles tribe and father of Tikal, was so hardened in the heart, had a heart so closed off, that he was willing to run down his own daughter to achieve power. And on top of that, killing the innocent Chao. Of course, no leader who does such things is worthy of the power of the Chaos Emeralds. And so, the Knuckles tribe, including Pachachamak, was wiped out destroyed by the vengeful chaos. These visions that we have been seeing through the eyes of all the playable characters have been the origin story of the closing of Chaos's heart, what made him into the god of destruction, the origin of the beast that destroyed the... Well, hold on, we haven't gotten there just yet. Okay, so Tikal communicated directly with the Chaos Emerald, perhaps to seal the destructive and negative chaos back within it. But alas, balance needed to be reobtained. So that helper sprite, that spirit of Tikal, was also sealed within the Master Emerald. Now, sure, this hasn't been spelled out to us just yet, but we can glean as much from the very first chronological scene of the story, the first scene of Knuckles. Sonic wakes up from this vision. The Fox and Hedgehog duo collect themselves and set out to find the seventh missing emerald. We make our way to Big's treehouse, and I was wrong. It looks like the emerald is still here. We'll have to... Oh, no. No! He's got the last emerald! Now what do we do? Chaos has all seven emeralds, and now with this god of destruction having gone rogue on Dr. Eggman, 
anything can happen. We see one final full motion video cutscene. What the hell? This is dark. Chaos is straight up killing innocent civilians. The city is flooded to Armageddon-like levels, and for the first time we see the god of destruction, perfect chaos. If I wasn't just dreaming, that monster is a real menace. Eggman. Looks like he's after chaos, too. This egg carrier, too, was made because something like this could happen. You have defied your master, stupid beast. Now it must be destroyed at all costs. Can anybody in this game figure it out? I've had enough. Who do you think you are anyway? Oh, it's you. The one who sealed chaos in the Master Emerald. Tikal. has always been in the Master Emerald along with Chaos's. Now he's filled with anger and sadness. And if it goes on, he'll eventually destroy the world like he did before. inside, will it? His heart will still remain in turmoil, and his anger just won't vanish. He'll just be trapped forever. Wow, that's very graceful of Sonic, to care for the anguish of an angry, destructive god, even as it destroys your home. Sonic's heart... The heart. Hey, Sonic! Amy! Here, take this! Hey guys, what's up? Chaos only used the negative power of the Emerald Sonic. You should be able to harness their real power. As much as I hate to admit it, I think Tails is right about this. Go Sonic! Yeah, Sonic! 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 Negative forces aren't the only way to empower the Chaos Emerald. Our positive feelings toward each other can make them work. Our hearts together form awesome power. Oh yeah, here we go. Supersonic! This boss fight might be jarring at first, 
Rings are now your timer, and getting hit by projectiles won't cause you to take damage, but they will slow you down and compromise your ability to fight chaos. We must get to chaos as smoothly as possible, building up enough momentum to push our way through his watery body and strike him from within his head. I wasn't aware of this at first, so I tried jump dashing into him, totally dampening my momentum. Every second we lose one ring, and when we lose all of our rings, we turn back into regular Sonic and fall into the water, losing the fight. The first half of the song is scored by the song, Open Your Heart. From the beginning, the main theme song, the menu track, was spelling out for us the core of the story. Core. Core in Latin is heart. The visions of the past world showed us the story of the closing of the heart. And now the story that we witness in this world is the story of the opening of the heart. Every story we've witnessed from these characters at its core is a story about love. A love for your siblings, a love for your friends, a love for your crush, and a love for the world itself. To set aside your fear and insecurities in service of others. Chaos as we know him, as the destructive god, was created through hate, fear, and greed. And this is how chaos is defeated. Simply put, through the power of friendship. The second half of this fight is not much different, just a second health bar that we must whittle down. It now occurs to me why it's so fitting that chaos is made of water. It's the perfect dualistic element. It sustains life, but drowns it. It can be the font of civilization or the crashing force that brings it to its knees. You may be wondering why I thought it thematically appropriate to introduce the Chow Garden so late into the video, right before this ultimate conclusion. This is why. Chaos has changed again, this time for the better. Yeah! Supersonic must have neutralized it, so it's nice again. These are the Chow you were protecting. They stayed alive for generations and now live peacefully with humans. Fighting's over, harmony's restored, and life goes on. Thank you so much. All's well that ends well, right? Tails, what the fuck? Sonic? Tails, the city's in ruin. Bro, that's not a happy ending. <laughs> Everything got fucked. No, but in all seriousness, look at this tonally dissonant ending. <laughs> Sonic is just bounding about a decimated civilization. Maybe this is kids' video game logic. Nobody was killed, everybody got evacuated, and whoever was in the vicinity are holed up in the destroyed buildings. Maybe with chaos gone, the waters will recede into the ocean, and all that was really lost was the tax dollars used to restore the city. But that's it. That's Sonic Adventure DX.
It's interesting. We've got a model for the mystical world of Sonic Adventure. The sacred area, the housing of the Chaos Emeralds, and the Master Emerald is a sort of like Angel Island Holy of Holies for the Chow. Or better yet, this old world of Angel Island is almost kind of like a Garden of Eden story. The Master Emerald itself, this sort of mysterious tabernacle. Either it is or represents a godly force that sort of acts as the font of balance of Angel Island. What keeps it in the sky, perhaps? And we have witnessed this unseen god not only be angered, but can also be bargained with. This unseen god was angered by Pachachamak, but also kind of like in an Old Testament way, was bargained with by Tikal. From this being of the Master Emerald, the seven chaos are controlled. That is, the seven chaos emeralds, but also chaos himself, the guardian of the Chows. This entire force, this nebulous stew of mystical phenomenon, is what lords over the world of old, the world we've been seeing in these visions. I'll just go ahead and call this old world Angel Island, and there are many denizens of Angel Island. But the Master Emerald, or at the very least, Chaos, has chosen the Chow to be his most beloved. But when the wickedness of the Knuckles clan was wrought on the Master Emerald's most beloved, the Chow, the Master Emerald released its destructive principality, Chaos, onto the Old World, onto Angel Island. Maybe not even as a command, but simply through permittance, allowing the rageful, wrathful chaos, witnessing this cruelty to break the leash and destroy everything, punish this realm for its wickedness. Oh gosh, yeah, a flood, like a Noah's flood type thing. But perhaps chaos's reciprocating of this violence came from a wrath, a torrentious anger so powerful that for a moment he broke away from the Master Emerald. That part's not super important. We can uh, get liberal with how floppy we get with it. It is a very cool idea that Chaos was so angered that for a moment he was too torrentious for the Master Emerald to even control. And so as the destruction of Chaos wrought on Angel Island, there was only one hope. Tika, the daughter of the wicked Pachachamak, bargained with the Master Emerald. And it was decided that the only way to make restitution, to strike balance against the torrentious hatred of Chaos, was to house it within the tabernacle of the Master Emerald, alongside the loving, open heart of the kind Tikal. And a new guardian would be established to protect the Master Emerald, a ward, the last remaining member of the Knuckles tribe, Knuckles the Echidna. But Knuckles is not a child of the Old World. No, his story takes place in the New World. <laughs> I, that's the only thing I was dreading about this video is having to draw Sonic characters. This literally is putting me in a fight or flight state right now. There's not much more I can add to the characters themselves, but since we're coming off the heels of the old world whiteboard, let's talk about Knuckles the Echidna. Knuckles is a very cool character. Dutiful, strong, and a strange combination between stoic and hot-headed. And despite never getting the answers that I believe he was seeking throughout his story, remember those were mainly given to Sonic in those visions, he stayed true to his birth duty. If it weren't for him, the Master Emerald would have never been repaired. There would be no focal point for the recapturing and reuniting of Chaos with Tikal. Any effort to defeat or appease Chaos would have been for naught. And so although his role in the story was quite subtle, I would still argue it was probably the most important. Now what about the antagonist? I would say Eggman is uniquely wicked in this game. From my recollection, he's a lot more nuanced, an actual main playable character in the Adventure 2 game. At the very least, his villainy is not as on the nose as it is in this game. He is symbolically a very fascinating character. If you notice, it's not just his shape and name that is symbolic of eggs. Everything from his ship to his robots have some sort of egg symbology. In many ways, Eggman's machinations, his robots, the things he's built are sort of a mockery of life, a mockery of birth, a cold metal facsimile or simulacrum of the egg. His shape, the egg, symbolizes new beginnings, natalism, rebirth. And in a very twisted way, his modus operandi is a, is a kind of a, a mockery of that. He forces these mobinis, these cute little animals, back into a egg, but a cold metallic egg. 
rebirthing them into a new life as one of his robots, metamorphosizing them into these cold, metallic shapes. In his very motivations, we have that concept of rebirth. He wants to lay waste to Station Square and rebuild it anew as Robotnik Land. Everything he does is sort of a mockery of the egg, and it has to be in some way, shape, or form his image. You see his face sort of plastered on everything. Even certain parts of the egg carrier kind of look like, like a face. Now that's Eggman. What about Sonic? He is the quintessential hero. Headstrong and benevolent until the end. And to be honest with you, I'm quite touched as an adult the care and concern he showed for chaos believing that it's not good enough to defeat and trap Chaos in the Master Emerald. He must be changed. His heart must be reopened. I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's a freaking amazing, like, story. I mean, at least for a kid's game, I think it's, you know, it's kind of profound. It's mature. I like it. Now, Amy, she is such a great character. When we're introduced to her, we are sort of front-loaded with this idea that she is this damsel in distress. She's even recalling instances where Sonic has saved her. But despite this, she is the forerunner, the vanguard of her own story. She softened the heart of Gamma, which ultimately led to the destruction of the E-100 series of robots. And she reunited this family of birds. In a way, Amy is the Sonic of her story. Gamma is like her chaos, and even the bird, Flicky, with the locket around his neck, is her Tikal, her guiding entity. If Sonic is the heart of the story, then Tails is the spine, the spitting image of bravery manifest. You see, Sonic is a bit vainglorious at times. You never see him break a sweat, but we see instances of Tail truly doubt himself, obviously in fear during key moments. The fact that he was able to overcome this fear speaks to the profound level of his bravery. After all, he's very youthful, his voice is childlike, he has a very innocent air to him, and so when he does sound worried in these key moments, you, you can't help but feel worried for him. And so the fact that he landed the final blow on Eggman and saved the city, albeit before Chaos returned, I think solidifies him as the hero, the backbone of this story. And well, big. Big is a bit of a wild card. Not a hero, but an everyman. He wants to fish, hang out with his best friend, live in the wilderness, and carry heavy objects. And yet, I like to think that if it weren't for Big retrieving Froggy from within Chaos in that penultimate boss fight before the perfect Chaos boss fight, perhaps Supersonic would have had to fight a far more powerful perfect Chaos. Eh, it's head and ultimately a lot of these efforts are kind of meaningless because perfect chaos comes about anyways. But still, we gotta give credit where credit is due. And although Gamma's final whiteboard is long behind us, after all, I've already gone in depth with his character, I'll give him some parting words. It's fitting that I concluded his whiteboard, his breakdown earlier in this video, because he's the one character that doesn't make it to the end cutscene, the finale of this game. The only reason I made a video like this is because I had planned on making a video just focusing on E-102 Gamma. Even before the first video of this channel, back in the day when I had plans of this being, you know, a kind of a shitposty channel, I had thought, let's do a serious, cool breakdown video on Gamma. And so how ironic is it that now the Sonic Adventure video is kind of the more tongue-in-cheek video of my, of my catalog. But there's not much more I can say about Gamma, or anything for that matter. That concludes my breakdown of Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. So that's that. This is the end of Season 2 of Flaw Peacock. Or, well, I guess I should say Flawed Peacock. If this is your first video of mine and you're really just here for the Sonic Adventure talk, now would be the time to click off this video. The rest of this is just going to be channel talk. The past 15 months of this channel have been, without a doubt, one of the best eras of my life. To a lot of you, this channel may seem like it came out of nowhere, but in truth, this is nearly two decades, a culmination of a bunch of creative trials and errors. I sincerely believe that everything we do, when we do it with passion and with love, contributes to our greatest work yet. And this is why I love the fan art so much. From the full-blown portraits to the simplistic JPEGs, while seemingly minor, a single piece of art that's dedicated to this channel, I believe is what brings those artists one step closer to their best work yet. If there's one thing I hope for any of you to take away from this channel, it's to pour yourself into what you do. Create, and do so with passion and with love. And if for any reason you're not feeling that passion, you're not feeling that love, then take a break. 
do something else creative. Learn a new skill, hone an already existing one. You'd be surprised how everything merges together. Just don't stop pouring yourself into what you do. That's it for this video. All that's left is to thank all of you who've made fan art for this channel. These aren't done in any specific order, and I sincerely apologize if I forgot anybody. I'm fairly certain I've gotten, I've got everybody. At least those who delivered fan art to me through email. I'm not really good at keeping up with the Reddit. But as always, thank you all so much for your patience and support. Ma salama, su desu tune, hasta luego, I'll see you soon.